and 7 o'clock. Uh, the Reading Conservation Commission meeting is now open. It's being recorded live on RCTV, and you can find it on their website. Uh, but the first item on our agenda was a request for determination of applicability for 2017-10, 288, 292 Grove Street, Lot 37, Lot 4, Meadowbrook Golf Cl Club, and it's been continued at the applicant's request until our next meeting on February 28th. So, <laughs> okay. Um, did, we've got a couple minutes. Uh, did, did you folks read the uh, order of conditions for 1503? I did. Did you? I did, yeah. Did you have any comments? Um, just seem to be a lot of stuff up in the air, but I I read it and I guess anything that was up in the air in the order of conditions is going to come through as the pro progress the project progresses. Oh, my. Mm. Any other comments? Mm. Did you get a chance to read it? Right. So I don't know if the applicant's coming tonight. I didn't hear from them. So um, I just want to make sure that they uh, don't have any comments. Okay. Okay. So, I, um, so I don't want you to close it if it's possible. You can hold off on that right. until uh, maybe something more shows up. Okay. 702. We have an amended, um, what is this? Amended order conditions or notice of intent? Amended uh, order of conditions. Uh, for 270 0673, 46 Randall Road, formerly 25 Springvale Road, map 15, lot 3, MG Hall. Um, Dave Pinet and I took a site visit um, there on Monday. Um, there's still a very large uh, <laughs> dirt pile right next to where they, uh, on lot three, where they would be putting the, um, the retaining wall. Uh, but we did look at um, the silt fence and the hay bales. The hay bales are, you know, starting to de deteriorate, as you would re expect through, you know, weathering. But the silt fence looked pretty well towed in. And um, the drainage system seems to be working, and I don't see very much uh, erosion anywhere. And it was very muddy because, you know, obviously the day before was poor. Dave, do you have anything to add? To no, just okay. the same thing. It's just you know, a little bit of erosion at the corner with a dirt pile, which is to be expected at the corner of the foundation. But everything looked, actually, the, the construction site overall looks pretty clean. Yeah. For being just, you know, to, for just having the snow disappeared, and it looked pretty good, it looked pretty clean. So, if I can add to that, I was there this afternoon, um, and on the left side, right up against the hay bales, and in one case, actually on top of the hay bales, and I can show you a picture. There's a very large boulder Stones, pile. Yeah. So. Um, I had mentioned it's, that to it's Chuck. right on. You can see here; it's right on the silt fence. Hmm. So I think that should be pulled back. I had mentioned that to Chuck, and he said that perhaps they were going to remove those and crush them. But okay. And I did talk to Mark Hall, but he um, he said some were being buried and some were going to be removed. <coughs> and do you know what lot that was on? I think it was three, or between three right. and the lot to the left of it. I don't know where the lot line is in that area. That be lot two? I think so. Well, well I, know, I know it's one to has the left. A foundation, of, so I know it's to the left of the lot three so the foundation. Two. Right. So I don't know. Is that lot two? Yeah. I thought it was lot two. one. Take the, the lots up here. Oh, it is lot two. So it's between lot two and lot three. Yeah. Back at the rear of the bales. So the um, topic of um, this amendment is um, lot three. And uh, are the applicants uh, here? OK. 
Okay. Would you like to talk about it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Do um, <laughs> we talk? Uh, yeah, well, so what, um, what we're thinking, if you can foresee it, but we're, so we're purchasing the property, and what we're trying to do is just create some usable space. Um, so I discussed with Tom and Jack McLogan, and uh, Nancy told me the architect, and we thought that uh, originally we were, originally we thought this was going to be level. I got to back up a little bit. And then we found out it wasn't. There was, you know, I don't know how steep of a grade, but a, 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 a good pitch directly back towards the conservation land, which is basically going to make all of the land basically from the front walk over almost entirely unusable. So we tried to get creative and see what could be a resolution in order to make it a level lot because we have a Siberian Husky and uh, we're expecting in June. So we're trying to find a space that we can designate as level land. And, have it abut to the conservation land, which is what drew us to the property to begin with. So we thought, after consulting with the engineers, that a two-tier wall would be um, a good resolution that would keep this whole front of the house on grade, and then there would be a pitch down on the right-hand side, uh, and then this whole level kind of to the patio, from the back of the patio to the what would become the retaining wall would be level. Um, so we could have usable yard space, uh, so that was part one. Part two was when we had started the process, we weren't, we found out after the fact, basically after the purchase of sale, that there was trees that had been really spread kind of all throughout the space. And what we did was consult with my landscape architect and find a potentially better way to keep as many trees as there were on the original plans because of the displacement from the original construction phase. And we ended up, I think we ended up adding one tree and four native shrubs. That Is that on this plan here or not? Because um, I don't remember getting a plan that showed any trees, uh, the new locations. This, so the next plan does show the new locations. The, the one we were just on? Yeah. Mm. So these trees, so native shrubs, uh, flower and dogwood, red maple, uh, white birch, red birch, and they're kind of placed throughout the lot, which covered the amount of trees that were originally placed. And a lot of the trees that were originally placed, I believe nine, if I remember correctly, were all white, um, white, no, they were white pines, which having grown up in conservation land, we had two, well, one was more catastrophic than the other, but two fell on our lot, one fell on the house. And one, the second one was killed my brother because they're very top heavy. And there was a whole eastern white pine that's right there. So they had five of them all within this little vicinity. There were some down here, there were some back here. So we thought that um, consulting with the landscape architect would find a better resolution, better trees, keep the privacy, uh, keep the number of trees that they originally had planned, add a few more and then still maintain kind of a level of space that would be, it looks big on the picture, but it's not very big in, in person. So that was the idea behind it. So the drawing itself, um, the only real changes were we, you know, this would just become a stone walkway instead of a paved walkway. And this would step down, there's a landing down here, then it steps down to the patio. Uh, then we kept that within the 35 foot line. Um, that was pretty much it. The idea was just to get more space in the Are you going to have, so on the, I guess the, the tip of the L here, call it the heel. Down here? Yeah. It, are you still going to have two walls there? I mean, the, it, you're basically grading out to, z to uh, mm -hmm. no wall, right? So are you still going to have, I guess I'm trying to envision how that, that works with the both in line. Yeah, I think Is Tom might be able to add. Hi, uh, my name is Thomas Hector, a project engineer with Jam Associates. Um, and the legal ad. Thank you. Uh, regarding the wall here, um, basically the wall is going to be at, at its maximum height. Um, right in this corner here. Yep. But then as we transition down to existing grade, uh, the <coughs> the rear wall will 
will be eliminated. Okay. Um, so here it's probably about uh, seven or seven or eight feet. Um, actually, probably I think it's close down to seven. But then as you get down here, um, we'll get down to four feet, and then we'll um, from this section here to here. Uh, go from four feet down to zero feet in this section of the wall. Well, not actually do there. Correct. Okay. Correct. Right. Um, the other thing that I just want to mention also is uh, the 25 foot um, no, non vegetated zone. Um, that did not change from the original uh, order conditions. Uh, this line here, we propo originally proposed uh, a post and rail uh, fence. And as you can see, um, that remains intact with the erosion control. And all the changes are merely landscaping and hardscaping and grading, um, obviously outside of, outside of that zone. Is the, um, is, um, sorry, I, I didn't have a chance to go to that. Is the roadway built? The cul de sac is yeah. built. Yeah. <coughs> it's a uh, base coat. Base coat behind the coat. Yeah, the foundations of all three are in. The actual framing of lot one is yeah. almost completely up. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know what we're saying. Uh, put the roof on. But it's, yeah. I know that I think they're waiting on a beam or something for lot two, and then we've just been trying to figure out um, this situation. How far is the back wall from the lot line? Well, I guess either lot line or, or Cold as the edge of pavement. Uh, really. Where? Um, here? I guess that would be or, Yeah, right in that here. area. Is well, um, I'd say, I think that's close to eight feet or so. Um, this dashed line right here, yep. that is a five foot uh, to maintenance access easement for road maintenance. So I think, I'm guessing that's around eight feet from there to there to the back of the wall. Uh, I know this section here is 60. That's enough room for someone to get, to get down around the side. Are you going to have enough room minutes. to get in your MSC strips without undermining that road? Um, we, yeah, we do have a, a, a wall detail, yeah. um, but um, it's only a preliminary design. Yeah. The wall of, well, of that will, uh, will need to be signed off and signed by structural engineer. But at this point, we just wanted to show the layout um, get it approved before our applicant goes out and spends money on a, on a, a wall design. Yeah. If the plan does not go through. Okay. Yeah, I think we actually, I think we actually did get started on that. I believe Webb, I'm not sure. Dan Webb is it? Maybe he was working on uh, the actual structural footings and the other pieces that would go. Maybe waste it. You can help reduce the width. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it seems tight in there, and with it, the cold is that. Yeah. Bill is. It's tough fitting into that type, type space. I just want to make sure we've got something that's constructible. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm just a little curious. Um, um, I know that you, you wanted to put the fence in for the dog. Um, can you just show me where that is? Just outline so it. The fence was going to run um, right along. It's going to run basically right along the A line, the, actually, the actual yeah. wetland perimeter. Uh, so uh, this, these lines with the circles, that is, um, I believe it's a chain link fence. So, yeah, it was like you said, a chain link fence. To, to, to corral the, the pets. But uh, it's going to run up this property line, and then it's going to run along the wetland line, mm -hmm. and then along the property line and stone wall, and then return back down. Uh, meanwhile, this split rail fence will go along the 25 foot offset there. Okay, so um, so they'll obviously there's there will be an opening in the split rail fence for the dog to get. Yeah, correct. And, and then is there a chain link fence that keeps coming up and it looks goes into the corner? I believe, uh, yeah, I think it comes down. The and it goes into that corner? And, and yeah, I think, well, I think what we're oops. hoping to do is once we hit, I believe, the 35 foot line, we're going to do a white PVC fence. Hmm. Just so you know, that would essentially be on both sides. Um, just so that we would have, you know, obviously cosmetically something that's more in line with what the neighborhood is ultimately going to be. So, so where is it on the right side? The right side, so it's basically going to be along the top of the wall. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and then it connects down here. So yeah. it's on top of the wall, there's going to be shrubbery there, and then obviously we don't want no protection of the wall. Uh, it's going to run on the top of the wall and then cut down and 
Okay, I see. And then, then once it gets back to the line there, it would then turn back into the channeling fence. And and the the proposed walkway in front of the house, it looked like it was pavers and it's now. Is it, did you change that to, or is it? I believe the original plan was going to just be cement, and then now we did per pavers. Um, materials are kind of TPD, but bluestone, brick, okay. something along those lines. Okay. That would be the access from the street forward and then over to the wall. Okay. Any other questions from members of the commission? Chuck, do you have any comments, questions? Uh, so I, I got a call uh, from a, a neighbor. I'm not sure if I here, but uh, the concern was um, the height of the trees and the shading and the privacy shading that they provide. And so in particular, there was three pines, I believe, that were taken out. What were they replaced with? So that was in this corner here. Mm -hmm. So um, flowering dogwood, white birch, white birch, red birch. So they had, if you look at the actual original tree plant, it wasn't, I want to send it to my landscape architect. He was a little bit surprised actually because it was just kind of intermittently spread throughout. So in this corner, if you look at lot two, they had eastern white pine, eastern white pine, eastern white pine. And then on the corner, this lot specifically, they had two more eastern white pine. So basically within a 15, let's call it a 10, 15 square foot area, they had five eastern white pines, which are at maturity 80 foot trees. Uh, so that didn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, so we just substituted that with other natural trees on the list. What's the, what would be the height of the trees that you... The flowery dogwoods, I believe, are about 30 to 40 feet up, 40 feet up maturity. So they're not dwarf? No, they're about, they're about half the size of these white pines. Okay. And that's, and I know too, so we were paying attention to this when we were trying to do it, was to keep them low in the front and on the back and on the side, just because this is, because if you're looking out here from the house, it's southwest exposure. So we didn't want these massive trees in the front of the house or in the back because this line looks vacant, obviously because it's an overview, but there are fully mature 50, 60, 70 foot trees literally on this line and they go this way, then it's just forest. So those will be smaller than the existing trees that are there. So the so you're proposing 15 trees and four shrubs. Yep. Um, and I think sh this had been brought up before. Um, are they all going to be flowering dogwood, or no. can you can you? So so the NS is native shrubs. So one, two, three, four. This is flowering dogwood. Flowering dogwood. FD. RN is red maple. Um, these are pines, like just shrubbery pines mm -hmm. that are, they probably get to be 20 some odd feet. Uh, uh, Do you mean like a arborvita? Yeah. On the, plan, so, on the plan set, uh, we do actually have a planning list. Yeah. I, I did not get the plan. I did not get this plan. Tuja, Tuja green giant? Is that yeah. a green giant? Tuja green giant. <laughs> there are eight of those. Yeah. yeah. And then the, uh, so flowering dog uh, yeah, and then showing, showing white yeah. birch, Thanks. white birch, red birch, and then the red one in the front. This is a white. Did, are you putting a white spruce in? Three white, white spruce? Spruce. White birch? White birch. Yeah, I saw the white birch, but. Two white birches. There was something you, you had submitted yeah, so, previously. Like, yeah, and then the, um, I think you had mentioned that those looked to be really big, so we went away from that and try to get a little smaller. Because I think we had originally had the white spruce in this back corner where the flowering dogwood was. And then um, I believe it was David who mentioned it was going to be really big. It looks really big. So we did a little more research. And with the girth of that white spruce, it was going to start to approach the house by about five to six years. So we did the flowering dogwood. Um, is there a reason why you decided to not put any plantings between the wall and the lot south? of you. Which side is up? This side? So you see the bot base of that wall, yeah. yeah. So Just yeah, so in that, that we area. Could have access for lawnmower and guests so they would come down. So basically if we're mowing the front lawn we'll be able to get down here without I mean to get to here have to go all the way around the house and back around. So instead of being kind of trapped down here, you have access through here and then access from the front. Mm -hmm. 
And if we put stuff there, I think by maturity it's going to end up blocking that. So is there going to be a gate in that corner in the fence? Or uh, yes. Is that what you're... Yeah. That? Yeah, because our dog is Siberian Husky, so he has to be enclosed at all times. Yeah. Uh, so we plan on having this step down, then basically this so white PVC, yeah. and then this would step down, and then that would then become chain link, and then circle back around. So and where the are you? Front would be all wide open. So where are you planning for the fence gates to go? Um, there would be one here. There would be one over here, and then we're trying to figure out whether to put this one at the top of the stairs or at the bottom of the stairs, where the landing is. And you're going to have direct access to the back through the backyard. You mentioned gate back there. So yes, with through the which part? Um, I guess just in the back of the house, uh, if you wanted to. In the chain link fence. Yeah, in the chain link fence. No, I don't plan on it unless you think we should. We don't just let never show back there. The dog's surprisingly timid because he seems crazy, but he probably won't even go past the post and rail fence. It's just, if we didn't have to have the post and rail fence, we wouldn't, but we're going to, and we actually, the more thought about it for ticks and things like that, it'd be better if it wasn't back there. So we actually thought it was a good idea to keep it. So when you change, um, so the original order of condition asks that uh, the plants, um, there's a uh, report given at the end of the winter uh, on survivability. With this change, who, whose responsibility is that going to be with the new plants and trees on your property? To keep them alive. No, just to report back that they are alive and replace them if they're not. That would be mine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I grew up in Harold Parker State Forest. That's what is primarily driving us out of the city is to get the privacy. And if this lot did not abut conservation land, we wouldn't have tried to buy it. So that allows you to get a professional to write the report, mm -hmm. but you can replace the trees if they died. If they, yeah. If they, so how does that work every year? Uh, just for the first two. Okay. So what is a professional landscaper or landscape architect? Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. As long as he puts his certification on the, I know, whatever the narrative he sends, sends to us. What's the certification, Chuck? Hmm. So. Chuck, what's the certification? What What is the certification? Uh, so registered. I think most of them are registered. Architect. You go to a website and you can Landscape verify architect. That. I guess yes. that's, that's what yeah, I'm Yeah, they do have a landscape registration. Landscape architect that we're yeah. requiring. Uh, no, it could be landscaper. Be landscaper. Be landscaper. Do, do you have a registration for a landscaper? No. I, I guess that's my no. point. Right. What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have a business license. <laughs> <laughs> Any business license or a PhD? Well, I think that's all you get for a landscaper, isn't mm -hmm. it? Landscaper <laughs> So, Mike, they usually come in on a letterhead, uh, you know, so you could, you could, you could check into it. Um, but no, we haven't really pushed it too much. You can't be a landscaper because you have okay, that's, I just want to make sure. Yeah. So. It's, it's so, actually on the order of conditions. Yeah, sometimes we'll say, you know, a, a landscaper under the supervision of a landscape architect mm -hmm. if there's a technical question about the viability or the, you know, all that. So, I, so. I think it'll be pretty easy to tell if the trees are alive or not. I think so, too. I think so. I think so. need a rocket scientist. Are there any questions? Well, that would help anyway. well, well, that's true, but over in, um, when we did the school, uh, the trees were dying out and no one could figure it out until we got right. um, Mary Chido in there and she said these, well, someone else knew too, but uh, Mary uh, planted different plants in that wetter area and uh, now they survived. Yeah. So, it, you know, <coughs> so what, what ended up happening, the trees weren't dead, but they were going to die. So they, were, they pulled those out. There are times when uh, the actual license is needed for a project. Yes, yeah. it helps. So that, but that was just one of those those times. Are there any comments from the audience? Yes. yes. I don't know if this is the right um, Can you introduce yourself? I'm in Kelly Duke. I'm your 156 Glenmuir Circle. So I'm, uh, my backyard is right where the retaining wall is. And I'm just wondering, there seems to be like a drain coming out of the retaining wall. Is there going to be water dumped behind that retaining wall? Or what's that drain? Are you talking about, on, I'm sorry, are you talking about on the plants? 
Second. Are you talking about on the plans, the, the drain? Yeah, just a retaining wall. Mm -hmm. When I go up to my property line, there's uh, chipping coming out, like like a drain or something, and I'm, I'm wondering what that is. If it's going to be water draining. Where the, right, so where this retaining wall is right now? <laughs> Not that so. one. The one behind. Up here? Uh, there is a big retaining wall already built. The foundation? The foundation wall. Oh, that's the foundation this, wall. It's a foundation wall. Right, that's the foundation wall. Water wall. Lines, I believe. Okay, so it goes right up to the, the wetland protection, the foundation, because it's right there. I'm not sure which pipe you're talking about. Um, Do you, can you, uh, would you be able to sh show it on this plan? If, if someone has a question, I will try to find the picture. This, this is the edge of the foundation, then there's 10 feet. The water lines coming in, from what I can tell when we went by over the weekend, was they're coming in the front through here. Yeah. <laughs> there are a couple of, mm, oh no, that, that, that was refuse. I thought there was a pipe down be, the back, but it was just a piece of PVC down there. Yeah, never mind. Right, that goes into their right. foundation, into their base. Yeah, yeah that's so that's, that's possible. Yeah, so that's, 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 that's the basement of their the house. Okay. Yeah, that's the foundation. It's probably the perimeter drain around the foundation footing. No, it's coming out. No, it goes into the basement. It's coming wall. through the wall at about five feet above the footing. Sewer line. And is that at the back that's of the house? That's a sewer line. Is that the back of the foundation? That yeah. is right next to my property, sort of. So I don't know if that's right. the back of the house. No, it's yeah. not. It's, as you walk yeah. up to the foundation that's, that's the from the road, road. Okay. Harry, as you walk yeah, up to the foundation yeah. from so the road, the yeah. about it just pops through the house. Number 66 is. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then because there is the an eight foot yeah, drop that's right where his finger was. over basically a right. 20 foot span, so it drops like this. So the back foundation wall doesn't have a front. So this looks like a retaining wall, which it is retaining on the soil. Yeah. But there's no back here, really. It's just footings for the most part. Um, so and that's why so it's like that. this. Mm -hmm. You have the front of the foundation wall right. here, and then this walks out from the basement. I kind of didn't see so that. So the pipe that she's looking at is right here, which is the sore line. Oh, I see. Coming yeah, yeah. You're looking at the front wall. This looks looks like it's all the same, but this is, this is eight feet lower than this, which is why we that was the back here. Yeah. <coughs> so I don't know if you understand. So that pipe is just part of the plumbing That's for the house. That's in the interior, and it would be going to the street. Uh, to the street. It, it's a sewer line to the street. Okay. Yeah, that line's going to run. So anything from the house, the water, the shower, the sinks is going to go from that pipe, which is here. In your home is, I believe, up here. That's going to run this no, way. No, I bet you it's gravity feed because, it is, because it's up. That part is up high, and then the back is yeah. the detail. Hopefully. <laughs> the house is built very close to the property line, then. like right almost on the property line. Um, the stone wall is the property line, and uh, that's at least. The, when I was out there today, I didn't see yeah. a clear demarcation of the property lines in, in real space. Um, but if you can tell from the plan, this is a stone wall. It's basically where the creek bed is. Right, but to the right and left in the front. No, you can't tell. You can't tell. Um, but your property is right straight back, right? But I'm, I'm right behind the, the, the wall that I see. On the other side of the stream? Yeah, on Rusty Plains. So mm -hmm. Okay. The side of the creek. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this looks, it looks like. On the map, it looks like it's a lot of space, but you're right, it's not yeah, a ton of space. It's not, it's right there. So this is the front, the wall you're seeing is the front of the foundation, and then the house will ultimately be in the back, and then it won't, you won't see that wall. Yeah. Okay. So if you look from the that front uh, corner here that we're looking, the upper right-hand corner, and <coughs> that's at the 35-foot line. So that's approximately probably 37 feet from the property line on that corner. Yep. Okay. To the to the property line. Okay. okay any other questions? Okay. Oh. Any? Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to accept the proposed changes to the order of conditions. 
So, um, how does this? This isn't a minor plan change. It's an amended, an amended amendment. It's an amended order of conditions. So we issue this, a, a new an amended order, order, order of conditions. conditions. So do we have to close first. I'm yeah, you have to do both. You have to close and you have to issue. So I need a motion to close the amended order of conditions for 2700695 as discussed. Make a motion to close proposed order of conditions. A second. Thank you. All those in favor? Okay. Make a motion to uh, issue. To issue. Uh, the amended order 2770-0673, 46 Randall Road. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you guys. I appreciate it. Certainly. So um, at the next meeting, we'll have that amended order of conditions. I'll send you a copy. I'll send Jack a copy. If you have any comments, you can get back to me. You might want to get that one too. Just to, because it'll, it'll have in it that you will be responsible for those, uh, for the trees and for the shrubs for the two years. And, uh, some of some other boilers plate stuff. But you'll get caught. Must be exciting for you all to look across the street, huh? Yeah, three on the next day. That didn't take long. I think they would have been too close to get too. I know. But I think this is the Mike, I have a question. Um, yeah. You well, said Thank you very much. The wall you wrote it down to the cul de sac. Yeah, what well, about the big yard? Sorry, they call it the Something <laughs> that is a strip. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The deer love those. That's what it says in the plan. They love just about anything that was. I don't like that. But they don't, don't like box strips. MSG strips. They don't like box They don't like earth. They love to mechanically stabilize this. No. Okay. And the next item on the agenda is the Aberjona Trail grant discussion from members of the Trails Committee, which I see uh, they're all here. <laughs> I think that's all of them. I don't know. Can you just make sure everyone is signed in tonight? I think we actually lost out on the last crowd. I have something if you want to, if this is appropriate, then we'll move forward with this. Uh, if not, we only have two plans. So once you send me for the distribution. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I, I wanted to see is, I'd love to see a superimposed map of where this is in town, where it's. I don't know which one you want to start with. Start with the first one. Is there an overlay? The whole area. As to where this is going? I can't remember. We're going to see something like that. Ready for me? So I'm Kim Hunter Schlager, uh, the staff person for the Trails Committee. Um, yeah, uh, Gene Jacobs and uh, Tim, <laughs> Tom Gardner, um, also members of the Trail Committee. I lose them all the time. Um, um, a couple months, well, maybe a month ago, I started, the Trails Committee started talking, I started talking with um, Chuck about whether to apply for the Recreational Trail Grant, which comes up once a year. The state administers it, but it's federal highway funds. Um, grants up to $50,000, and um, conservation has applied twice before, got the grants both times. The first time it was used to build a uh, boardwalk in Bear Meadow, the second one was the uh, Perchian Woods Boardwalk. In those two cases, the Conservation Commission applied for the grants and the Trails Committee did all the work. And this commit this time around, we're uh, applying, I'm applying for the grant uh, myself. Um, Chuck's been very supportive. I've had great support from the uh, engineering <coughs> as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Chuck, can you zoom out all the way on this thing? So what we're proposing is, so this is the center of town, the railroad track going across. Willow Street, Austin Prep, Lowell Street, and the Millette Conservation Area. Um, in here, this is the average owner river, which sort of starts up by the high school, like as it first comes above ground there, um, runs down past Longwood Conservation Area, and this is the top of the Mystic River watershed. Um, and so what's been proposed is a trail from Hunt Street Across, through the marsh on a sewer easement, which is very slightly raised, not very impressively, but slightly raised above the surrounding marsh. And then it would connect to an existing trail here. This trail on Willow Street is paved here into a meadow, and some of you maybe have been down there. And on this side, you can sort of 
see where the trail goes, but it's really overgrown in here. Um, that rehabilitating this trail is not part of the grant. We're just asking um, for funds for this. Could you go to the other um, map? So starting at Hunt Street, this would be the uh, trailhead. Um, the sort of bluish dotted line, this is the sewer easement. And the orange dotted line is the proposed trail. So it would be an uh, earthen trail well into what looks like marsh here. A 90 foot bog bridge here, and that's basically um, four by four sleepers and four by four stringers and decking right on them. So relatively low to the ground. Uh, there's a stash of old bicycles in here that have been there so long there are trees growing up there. So one of the minor elements of the application is to get some youth volunteers in there to uh, help us get those out of there. Then there's a 10-foot bridge here that we're proposing um, because the, the berm switches, moves over here. Uh, now they're upland trail, 40 foot of, feet of um, boardwalk here. And by boardwalk, I mean the kind you've seen out in our other projects where you have a full two by eight framed construction. They're four by 10 foot sections. Um, and then a 20 foot bridge over the average on the river. Sure. So, Thank you. And then it would connect by an upland to this other trail. So that's a proposal we're asking for $11,500, which is all materials, all construction materials. Um, there's a 20% match requirement, and that would be made up almost entirely of volunteer labor and some staff time, text time, my time, and DPW will um, erect a, a, a kiosk here for information at the trailhead, which will actually be donated by a couple of neighbors. Um, DPW will haul the bicycles out once we get here. The survey team has already been out there to make sure we know where the sewer line is. You can see um, some manholes, but where it is in between is um, not, not always apparent. Um, if we get the grant, we'll, it will, we'll get it in the fall sometime, and we'll be back before you asking for a notice of intent. Um, it's not a perennial stream here, based on an a AECOM uh, study in 2013. So we don't have to have a, a filing of the Rivers Protection Act, which is interesting. <laughs> Especially since one of the selling points we hope for this grant is that it's top, at the top of the Mystic River watershed. You get extra points on, the, on this grant if um, you're improving the Ipswich or the Mystic, or I think there was one other um, watershed they're interested in. So that's kind of a good hook to hang this one on. Um, the first work probably wouldn't happen until spring of 2019. And then we would finish up um, spring 2020. So it's spread out over quite a bit of time, which um, is good in that it won't wear the trails committee out entirely. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the budget part of the application is based on uh, real solid uh, quotes from Moynihan's and from a uh, company that this piece of boardwalk is going to be supported on um, metal swamp pans. It's an 18 inch by 18 inch galvanized steel pan, basically, that holds a 2 by 4 post, or 4 by 4 post, I'm sorry, um, that you put down in the, in the marsh and then it just settles in. Um, so what we've tried to do with the design is keep things on the surface so that we're not doing any more digging than setting this, you know, leveling the sleepers or um, basically or maybe making the ramps from the boardwalk uh, really get down to soil level so that the structures are ADA compatible. Um, we're proposing rebar pins, drift pins they call them on a forest service plan that I'm using as a basis for this bridge, which would go through the um, the, ramp, the end of the ramps, the sills basically, where we're off the sewer line to keep the um, structures from floating away if, we, uh, if the floodwaters are high. But based on what we see out there, we don't think this floods too much. This is a real choke point up here where the water comes out. This is PNS variety basically. It's a real choke point for the water flooding this marsh. Um, and then there's a culvert here. Is that Willow Street? This is Willow Street here. Yep. There's been some beaver action in here in the past that you might know of. Um, 
I'm sorry, I'm, I'm completely disoriented. Oh. And, and I hate to, as a male, I hate to ask for directions. But, <laughs> yeah. um, you see like, where are the train tracks? Right there. The that's the train way. tracks. That's, so that's the Willow Street, uh, um, no, commuter rail station way down here. Is Hunch, is Hunch Summer Street Ave is right over here, just curving down to where it meets Willow. Okay. The end and to the right is where we just had a project, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right. So this pro you had a, a, a filing right yeah. here mm -hmm. at the very end of Hunt Street. So that's the trail. I get it. Okay, I was on the wrong side of the tracks yeah. as usual. So the, the, proposed <laughs> 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 <Thank you. laughs> the, the proposed trail is about 850. <laughs> right. Thank you. Uh, a question. The AECOM study is... Is this the same AECOM study that... Didn't we have one that we had didn't think was correct at one point when we were doing the um Acadia Avenue? Yes. yes. Yeah. Is this the same stretch? No. 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 Uh, well, is Arcadia is a, a ways further downstream. Did than you chase that all the way back to like? So we did, but I think I don't think that one of the data points for that study was where we were looking. Okay. So that it wasn't that we didn't, didn't go down any, that far. We didn't go down that far, and we went with the conservation commission. who we'll always believe that the intersection of um, Summer and West Street West. is the beginning yeah. of the perennial stream. Okay. Yeah. And we. And we decided that the it was a and that might have to do with watershed, but you it was it was chased we talked about the, it was the watershed area, watershed area, area of the watershed. At that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yes, it actually doesn't look like it dries up in here unless you know, maybe on a super dry summer. But I haven't been out. We were out there in the spring, uh, April of last year, and then several times this winter. I have three questions about this. One, one was, uh, you had mentioned a figure of the 11, 11, 11,500 on your paper here. It says 13,000. And I that you have well, a request. So, so um, Moynihan's charged. Uh, so I have a real detailed budget uh, uh, cutting list, basically. Send it over to Moynihan's, and I, I checked the quantities, and then later, after you got that, um, realized they charged me $99 for each of 20 uh, three by uh, five-inch long carriage bolts. Oh. And when you put the decimal point in front of that nine right. nine, the budget yeah. dropped considerably. That's what you're I would, I would say so. Uh, With those titanium <laughs> bolts. Yeah. Bolts, maybe. <laughs> um, the other thing that I have, I have for question. Uh, my second question is on the uh, on the third page here in the uh, project scope and discussion. You have building ninety feet of bog bridge. And as I was reviewing this, I know that, noticed that the other um, crossings that you have are four feet wide. In this one, the bog bridge is three feet wide. And on the other uh, crossing, you also mentioned bumpers, and there's no bumpers mentioned on the, the bog bridge. Right, is so there a reason for that? And three feet is... My friend Bob and I here were walking on that bridge at the same time. Someone would have to yield. And if you're on a bicycle, someone's going to be wet. Um, Dave. <laughs> and they're guys, so they're going to be lost, too. Because you know one of us is not going to yield. Um, so it'll be about nine Some inches TV. off. The, off the I had nothing to do with this. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, you weren't a part of that. Yeah, um, that was a so the, uh, four by four sleepers, four by four stringers on top of that, and the decking yep. on top of that. So basically, nine inches or a little bit less is how high you are above the mark. Above the ground. Okay. Um, three. So the boardwalk in Kirchian Woods is three feet wide, and almost every other structure we've built or we or the scouts have built has been four feet wide. I just did this one because it's three feet, partly to keep the cost of the grant down, but also partly because everyone on the trails committee is over the age of sixty. <laughs> And um, that's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we have these great volunteers, and they're in their you know, middle. Of, uh, so that's I mean, honestly, those young that folks that are, that are so fetching those bicycles out of there can yeah. can bring the materials. But the other thing is, in general terms, for uh, for a lot of building materials, they're built on on four foot units. You know, four by eight plywood, eight, right. twelve, yep. sixteen. Yep. So they really come in usually in four foot units. But that that's neither here nor there. My third question is: Is at the end of Hunt Street, um, would there be any plan to provide parking at the end of Hunt Street for the trail entrance at that point? Um, I haven't addressed that at all. Um, okay. That would be a conversation with engineering. 
It seems possible. And the, 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 so that's the so. town right away that extends, yeah, past the end of the paved area. Slopes off a bit, and there's some mature mm. trees in there, but it's um, so I, I, above I, the wetlands line. So, so we did in talk. The area. We did talk about this. Okay. Um, I was opposed to parking in the Hunt Street area. Thought it was something for the neighborhood, and there's there is parking which we haven't fully investigated, but it's off Willow Street next to the tracks. If you wanted to, and I know that you know, other communities, when they come in, they're gonna have to drive and find a place to park, but then those, you know, for those people, they could park on the street, but you know, I don't think this is a formal parking area proposal. It's not part of this application, and it's not something it's too I would too want to see the down there. Oh, is it always there? So Actually, often. I know that <coughs> parking space that you're talking about on, on Willow Street. It's yeah, like, it runs right in. The tree, you see right. the dotted line? Yep. That It probably goes yep. right in just until it turns. Yep. Um, you know, and for a more enthusiastic walker, it, there could be some parking availability at Austin Prep. Mm -hmm. There's actually That's, some right here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's really not that far. I mean, I not that far of a walk, really. Basically, walk down down there every no, day. No, it's not far. Um, so, um, so this area, when we ha when we had the Hunt Street project in front of us, this, we found that this area was actually prone to dumping in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we had asked the that resident to put up signs, I believe. But is there a way that we can also incorporate that into? This make sure. Well, this is a sign. I, so we shouldn't add, uh, you know, I think to the price tag of, of mm. this. The grant. Yeah, but we can get sure. signs made. Yeah. And there is a sign that says no dumping already up, up there. If more are needed, we can take care of that on our own. Yeah, when, so that would be something we'd think about outside of. Yeah. The, yeah. Okay. But there's also going to be a kiosk, you said, right, with some yeah. the, the map? Yeah. So, I mean, I think just. By having it, it's going to make it look a little bit more official than it looks right now. People aren't going yeah. to be less likely to dump in that situation. Mm -hmm. that they're not going to dump like the washing machine that was right. right next to the entrance of Pineville, right over off of Pineville Ave. Right. Um, the location where the trail um, comes out at Lowell Street. Uh -huh. um, what's that going to look like, or is it? It's not part of the, the yeah. application. I'm hoping I'm just curious. that the I trails mean. committee will do so. Actually, I had a, a, I've had a call from some high school volunteers and they haven't gotten back to me. I'm really hoping that we have a group of um, National Honor Society kids that would help us brush this out, blaze it. Um, I'd like to see a sign, just a small signpost there, you know, four by four. And, yeah. you know, when you were out there that Saturday, did you guys walk down that, that path? Pardon? When, I, you know, I, we were out there a couple Saturdays yeah, back, right? Did you walk down? Um, from that corner to took Lowell? Some, took some photos, but I didn't, I didn't actually Sorry. walk in. It's, we walked in and... Yeah. So the ground? Yeah, that's right. Last spring. Yeah, our yeah. first visit out there, we walked from all the way out. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and it's, yeah, it's pretty open, really. Yeah. A lot of things falling down. Some briars. Right. Okay. <clears throat> I did have a couple other comments. Um, the bicycle graveyard, We'll cut the frames or wheels apart to get them out of there because there are trees coming right up through the bicycle. We don't, there's no <clears throat> reason where they are to remove the trees. That's how we get them out of there. Um, as far as the comment about a three foot versus a four foot wide boardwalk, we, we had the same discussion in the meeting. Every time we um, have a, especially a long boardwalk, um, we discuss that whether the benefit is really um, worth the extra effort. Um, and in this case, we just felt that three feet would be adequate for that particular section. Um, the bridge itself going over the river is gonna, will have a railing because that's going to be some going to be uh, at least a foot and a half yeah, feet, two feet above the water level. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it's, that'll that will be designed for the um, building inspection. Is this designed to be ADA accessible, the whole trail? It's just the uh, the structures themselves. Um, the, it's going to be 
problematic, really, for making the whole thing ADA accessible. Although some of the um, off-road wheelchairs are doing now um, probably is would be possible. And aside from clearing the upland trail, we won't be surfacing it in any way. Does anyone know if uh, Reading High School re has a uh, public service requirement for graduation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Community service? Yeah, community service, public service. Yeah. The ninth it's like hundred hours, are isn't it? Required to do community service as part of their advisory class. Okay. It's like a hundred hours, isn't it? Uh, it's not that many. No, fifty. Yeah. No, but they all have to do it to put right. it on their resume to get into college and. And a lot of the a lot of the religious ed stuff involves it, so there's a lot of different ways people are doing it. I've been in touch with Austin Prep too. I've, I've got some good letters of support, including um, I'm hoping one from the Conservation Commission, one from the Mystic River Watershed Association, and uh, I'm hoping the um, from Austin Prep. I've got a contact over there, and I'm hoping that they might have a um, a volunteer, you know, now, some public service component that we could tap into. Because it's amazing sometimes when you when you throw those things out to a school, and it might not be just a, a class or a senior class project or a senior class requirement. Sometimes um, sports teams are looking for something that the, the sports teams can do for an activity that's community based, yeah, and that's what it is. you can imagine. Mixed results. Yeah. But um, yeah, we can get some football players or rugby players yeah. or something to carry some of the materials in there, I'd be happy. <laughs> Just get them all to run the trail once and it'll be cleared out in no time. <laughs> so, um, so I'm surprised that, uh, well not surprised, but I'd like to take the opportunity to fix um, that 90 foot bridge. I believe it should be four feet. And I think the reason is because on the application you're inviting not only walkers and hikers down there, but bikers and mountain bikers. And oh, that's, right. that's a lot of activity on a three foot bridge. Plus we have a, you know, um, this standard. And I know that you guys are doing the work and, but I just think the, the four foot bridge, um, it, it just has that DCR look to it when you finish it. The ones that you've done in the past, that were the four foot with the railing, they looked great and they and they held up. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe we can get some more volunteers and we can, you know, increase the size by another foot. Uh, and I know that I was going to uh, volunteer for this project myself. I don't know. I know Dave is a maybe Dave too. I don't know. I think he just volunteered for you. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, but uh, no, I don't have any problem. You know, he certainly could use the construction skills and things like that to, to volunteer. My I think time. we're going to be hauling stuff out in the woods. Yeah, we, we haven't learned our stripes yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave. This is shipping. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm just concerned about people passing each other. And, I would agree. With, with the, with the, with and I think Dave brought that. That's why I brought it up. Yeah. I, I would just like to go on record saying I think we can get by each other. <laughs> uh, and I think you're saying that <laughs> it's it's a okay. time. Just saying. <laughs> so, I mean, the, yeah, the, I mean, we're only talking about the bog bridge section being three feet wide. But it's the longest. Yeah, it's 100 feet. Yeah. Because you kind of you're gonna just be stuck out there. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're night. You're you know, 45 feet away from. <clears throat> And someone's coming at you. It's a long on stretch a, on, a, on a bike. It, it's not a ten-foot stretch where you you see someone coming in the the short term. Where yeah. Whereas this is a long stretch, so people are gonna if they're coming opposite directions. It's 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 bound to happen. Well, a couple points. It is a straight section, so you will see them coming. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly didn't expect that high traffic out there. That was another piece. We in a in a bigger conservation area, we wouldn't have gone with three feet. Um, but I hear you. Four feet would be nice, but we'll need some extra help carrying. And the other thing that's been implied is we'd love to see bikes be able to use this. That's currently against your rules, but we would hope when we meet with you later that you would. Um, yeah, so that's the proposal the for this bikes. Area. So, so the whole. I mean, 
kind of the, the, the bottom ground, the bottom line is that it's, it's great to have a place, but we got to get people out there because, you know, we just can't keep these things to ourselves. And if everyone's, if everyone was riding horses here, we'd be talking about allowing those out there. But it's mountain bikes, very popular. Um, a lot of the kids are using them, bikes, and, and people walking out there, which is always uh, very traditional. So I think we should have that conversation for this spot. Do you think it's going to become a shortcut in particular, either to Austin Prep or anywhere else? Open Austin Prep, and that's isn't that why you were that's contacting them? Right. Yeah. So um, maybe yeah, yeah, the high school. Right. Yeah. Because you know, some some of these become <laughs> become really popular paths for kids going to and from school, and then you have more. Thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but then you'll have more kids on bikes than you otherwise might expect, even though you don't have the parking. And the other thing I've seen sometimes is a wide section. Mm. Well, I can, I'll say for my daughter in a power wheelchair, four feet's better than three. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. so I'm, I'm not inclined to change the grant application, but I think we can talk, if, if we get it, um, we'll actually talk about it, see what else we can cobble together. It, maybe the difference in price would be something like the Trails Committee uh, cobble, or maybe you guys can help us out. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yep. That sounds that great. Sense. Yeah. So we don't need any vote at this point, do we? No, we need a vote to approve that we approve of this uh, project. Just to can we support it. Okay. I make a motion to support the Aboriginal Trail Grant Grant Project. Second. All those in favor. Is that Dave? Yeah. Is it you, you Dave? Second. Second. Yeah. yeah. Thank do you, you need any you. so as a part of our support do you need anything with the grant a, a letter I think the letter has been signed okay right. excellent I wrote a letter of support on behalf of the conservation I'm glad you voted <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, I could just rip it off if we had <laughs> no we have yeah we have right here okay it's due tomorrow that's right Mike, Mike, we're Mike got it. don't sure. look <laughs> don't look Mike please <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you so Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to my bike. Um, yes. I forget. I, that's Mr. Coleman, correct? Yes. I forget your name. I'm sorry. Shield. Yeah. Mr. Shield. Um, we started um, at 7 o'clock and it was Meadowbrook Golf Club and they continued so that wasn't on the agenda but at 702 we had this discussion for Randall Road which I am assuming that is why you're here uh, being uh, neighbors of that project. That's correct. I wasn't aware of the order of business here, especially shortly with Meadowbrook. Typically, weren't we notified by mail of these meetings? Um, yes. I was away for a couple of weeks, but I opened all the mail yesterday, and I didn't see anything from the town except excise tax. The um, the applicants uh, um, engineer brought in the return receipt request. You know the return. Can I go through that? Yeah, is there? Um, yeah, yeah, they're at an alphabetical order. So. So they sent them a certificate of mailing. Right. So you didn't have to sign for uh, the envelope. You would have just received it. And it. I don't think it would have come from the town. What's the it would have come. It comes from. Yeah. It comes from the applicant. Yeah. So was there anybody there? Yes. The um, the applicant. As well as a neighbor, um, what's Spears? Spears? What's, what's the huh. street in back? She said she lives on Randall Road, directly behind the Colleen. She was that was um, Glenmere. 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 Right, right behind lot right. three. Three. Right. 
And uh, the um, engineer for the applicant was here, Mr. Quilkin. And we closed the meeting, right? Yes, we closed the meeting. No, it's Thomas Hector was the engineer from uh, JM Associates. Oh, that, that's who Tom, okay. Uh, yeah, Jack wasn't here tonight. Yeah, because it was signed by Jack. It was stamped by Jack. <coughs> yeah, we don't see one for Coleman. Not Mr. Shield. So. Mr. Shields called me about 7.15 and said he wanted a meeting for what meeting? About what? And he kind of elaborated, so I said, sure, I'll go. <laughs> you know what? I'm thinking. What's the distance when you made? 300 made feet. 300 feet. Is but would it have to have been the entire project? If it was amended on the notice of intent, it should have been the entire project, right? Yeah, I would think so, but... Did they just do based on the yeah, I'm, property? I'm wondering. Uh, I got all the other ones. No, I understand. I'm just trying to, you know, think of why you, you might not have received it. I don't Uh, well, my interest was uh, uh, the status of the documents uh, addressing that, in particular, uh, in that end of the street, uh, landscaping, uh, and the sheet I have is left with an open question that uh, who's going to maintain the wetland? Uh, and the comment on my sheet said it's, uh, there, there'll be a lot for the town and a lot for the homeowner to maintain the wetlands. And uh, you have to do a couple times a year, use the proper fertilizer and all this. And there was no resolution associated with that. <clears throat> and also uh, on the same same vent, same area exactly, as a matter of fact, uh, the Springvale um, property uh, is uh, owned by Dina Weissman. And she had a conversation which this happened happened to be there in the conversation with uh, Paul that they would plant large trees there so so could block the view because uh, the house was always looking at foliage and uh, she's losing all her privacy here so Mark Hall had agreed to put trees there mm -hmm. and I don't see that reflected anywhere either. It's, this is going away in a hurry. So the new plan is up, um, and what I, from what I understand, these are the east and white pines that were on the original plan, flowering dogwood, and the new plan. They're they're putting in uh, those are still going in. Right. These so, are these are the new plant trees. And those are. I don't know if that list there, but uh, it, we, we just those are the Thuga Green are Giants. The and they're and they're the white pine. It's the same we just talked about. But there were three more over here that have been taking taken out. So the applicant said that the white pine are going to be 80 feet tall at maturity. And he was worried about that. And he's replaced them with trees that are going to be 40 foot tall at the tree. So I think the thinking was that that shading and that sight line would still be uh, blocked. Uh, They're just not pine trees. This is lot three. Yeah, that's the one, the last one on the left side. Going up. Right, and there's, there's lot two right here. You see that right there. Across the street is where Weissman lives. 
That's, that wasn't really up for any anything to do with this project across the street. Wait, what? All we're discussing we're, okay. is this particular. All we're discussing is this particular lot tonight. Lot three. We're not discussing all the lots in the oh, subdivision. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're only discussing this lot tonight. Uh, like I like I said. The is Weissman on Springvale Road? Road? Is, is is Weissman Weiss or is it Weiss you're talking about? Weissman. Yeah. Is it 25 Springvale? Yes, it's Springvale. Yeah, we are. Springvale, but no, that's uh, that's Lawrence House. Uh, um, next door. On Springvale. On Springvale. We were talking about the lot opposite that. So this. Yeah, I wanted to bring this up. I, you know, uh, this is a this is a meeting where we're addressing issues on the end of the street, and the issue was even highlighted which I happen to have right here, uh, uh, highlighted in your documents. And then there's no resolution, and there was an agreement going on. I, I don't know what you're going to do about that, or what can be done about that. Well, Homeowner. that's not part of our discussion, and, you know, isn't it? It would have to do with the landscaping on Lot 1. Well, Right, and that's outside the hundred foot. The lot one is significantly outside the hundred right. foot. Right, yeah. so it's so it's, zone. Yeah, okay. it's not within our jurisdiction because it's outside the hundred foot buffer zone. So it's not within the conservation commission jurisdiction. That's interesting. Oh wait a minute! Yes, it is because uh, you have the leveling pond or whatever they call it on that property. That's on the opposite side of the street, right? No, it's on. It's. It's right next to the. No, we one. had looked at what the plan for that. He's right. We had looked at on lot one. There's a detention pond before it crosses the right. street. We had and looked it's, at. It's a it's, uh, contoured out at yes. this point. Yep. Yeah. That's not a wetland. That's stormwater runoff. That's stormwater right? runoff. Yep. We looked at that area because it was part of the stormwater system, and that needed to work for the rest of the stormwater to right. work. So I can't ask you to, you know, hand write it in your in your uh, agenda here tonight, but uh, uh, it's got to be addressed before that's put together. I guess I'm unclear. What I'm I'm pretty sure our notice of intent on the previous project, particularly for lot one, had all the details buttoned out. I uh, I'm not sure what was missing from it. You, you said there was an open-ended item in the notice and the uh, order of conditions? There are new items for this guy here, as Chuck pointed out. They just moved some stuff around. Uh, and I apparently addressed the fence at the back in the wetland area, or the no building area. Uh, so the project today shows the fence uh, this is what he came to us with, that there's going to be a fence for his dog, comes across here. Oh, I'm, what's that? I don't know if I've done this right, but basically it goes on the 25-foot line. I know. Did I get there? Yep. Yes. That's a big deal. Is that right? Or is it here? There's, the two there's a chain link fence. fence. There's a chain link and a split rail. Right. The chain link is on the hay bales. Right. All right, so yeah, so this is Along the, right. the, the, the chain the stone link. wall. That's the chain link coming down through here. And back over there. I'm, I'm sorry, is this your property that you're here to discuss? Because of the I'm a nosy neighbor. <laughs> oh. Okay, I, w I wasn't sure who's. I didn't know if you were that about his property or. Okay. No, I'm on this side of it. Up to. Is this the house on the northern side of Ringo Road or the southern side? No, it's the northern side. So this is the one that's two houses away from town, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so that, that's the turnaround there? Mm -hmm. That's right, that's the cold sack. The only one that wasn't here tonight, was it? No. I don't know. I didn't really say that. Did I talk to him this afternoon? There were no, uh, there were no the neighbors video. at the time of the um, discussion. Except the woman behind. Except there the woman there behind was someone from 
Oh yeah, um, right. What is that rogue back? Glenn. 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 Yeah. yeah. And her concern was a um, uh, a pipe. Actually, she thought it was a retaining wall, but it's actually the front foundation of the house, and it's really the sewer line that that is comes in off the street, the cul-de-sac. That was it. We told her we could turn it around and run it over to our property, but she didn't want us to do that. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Hard to get along. Um, you know, thank thing? you, uh, thank you, get gentlemen, for coming in. But we are going to move along in our agenda. I apologize for the late. I would, I would, I would appreciate being invited in the future. Since I was in the past, there must have been a reason for it. I don't, I can't answer that. I'm sorry, Mr. Coleman. So, so I mean, I'm, I'm at the right place to have that answer. I, I, I mean, I've got the right people here. I'm just saying, it's, in the future, could you remember to include me? It's, um, it's the responsibility of the applicant to notify you, and we receive those receipts. And it, when the applicant makes an error like that, it's not our responsibility to necessarily check every ticket stub to make sure you know what I mean to, to vet their what they were supposed to do I mean we noticed that they missed that and you know and you know we could you, you know that's come to light because you're here and I apologize that they made that error but it's not our responsibility to catch that error do you know what I mean so yeah it's, it's hard to follow uh, I know what you mean I don't agree with you but I know what you mean yeah. Yes. No, I, mean, I understand. Back up to talk with somebody. Uh, so our re requirements are that you get a certified abutters list for the for the project, and they produce that. And I don't have the certification here. It's back in well, the office. Chuck, all I'm saying to you is, you sent these out many times before. Just send it to the same people you sent it to before. Chuck so didn't send it out. That's works. the thing. Chuck, that's it's the it applicant. Works. It works by where the project is and 300 feet from the project. But Mike was right that we, but, but we're amending the entire order of conditions, and you should have been included. So I agree with that. But I don't make the list up. So something, something went wrong uh, with whatever. Uh, you know, maybe they have lot numbers now. Maybe they have, and I, I actually do think they have addresses now. So. They must have focused in on that address instead of all of the addresses, and it just wasn't caught. That one's 50. Yeah, yeah. so what we're saying, Coleman, it, it, because I, I, I agree with what Chuck just said, what likely happened is they, they took this property line and said 300 feet from that, mm -hmm. and you might have been outside of that zone now. Mm -hmm. um, because this was based on the entire project, I, I, I completely agree with Chuck that. If, if something associated with this entire notice of intent comes up, you should be on that list. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. uh, You're welcome to. You're welcome to, to hear the rest of it. We're taking up the. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, tell anything more? 1503. I think we already. Well, we started talking about that, and then I asked you to table it until. Oh, that's right. Oh, you thought the somebody might. To get the time the applicant to get here, yeah. but I, I would say, at this point, they're not. Well, they're not coming. We were going to have an informal discussion. No, I just wanted. I hadn't heard back from them. Um, uh, and so maybe that they're okay, you know. They're okay I would assume. I would assume. I mean, we actually don't have any more time to keep. Uh, did we already close it? Um, yeah, it's in the minutes. Let me review the minutes. See Sorry, I wasn't at the last meeting. That's what I had. To What's fifteen oh three Main Street? It's the one near and Matt. Just past Matera Cabin on the right. Matera, and there's a same side of the street or the other side. Same same side. It it abuts. Um, oh right 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 right. I did. And there was yeah. some we we had some site visits and so. disagreed with it, some of their flags and so you know we had on-site inspection and there were some changes to the, the 
the flags. Did they submit was, a new revised? They did. They submitted a revised plan with the. So it was changed. approved and, and issued. So we yeah. are on that 21 day notice. So we can't extend it. Boop. Okay. Sure. No, that, that's fine. Okay. You don't really issue it though, right? Oh, yeah, I have to issue it. You have to close and then issue. Thanks for coming Thanks for in. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. And we do that all at the same time. Usually we close. And then then we we'll write and, and then we issue, issue it, right? That is what I Unless someone has an objection to that and has their memory, because these aren't approved minutes. But that's what my notes I read the minutes. I didn't have any okay. changes. All right, so um, speaking of 1503, I did write the order of conditions, um, uh, the uh, ORAD, and it specifically, and we talked to the um, applicant when they were here, and we said we would not approve the 100-year um, flood line right. because it wasn't supported by any material. Um, and then looking back through past projects, that, you know, my recollection, and it's just, which is true, you can look at the plans, that they're telling us that that 100-year flood line is at the 70 contour. But um, in the past project that has basically the same plan and the same application, and just the years just uh, are the difference, uh, it was at the 71 contour line. So it had moved up, you know, in elevation a foot, but maybe, I don't know how to say it, it might be two feet, you know, in distance. Right. Is that the Ipswich? That yes. It is the Ipswich. And then the we have the flood insurance study for the Ipswich? Well, it's either the Ipswich or the um, I mean, Bare Meadow. This is really up to them to give it to us. Right. There's, there's I mean, two rivers on the property. Right. And Simply uh, looking at the flood insurance study. And we're also not, we didn't get any information on the river, was a perennial stream, top of bank, or anything like that, so we're not approving that either. Okay. And we didn't get any information on the vernal pool. So right. where's the vernal pool? Right. What's the extent of the vernal pool? And then we have something in our regulations that allows us to protect the habitat. So without the first couple, we can't do the last thing. So right. we're not going right. to approve, you know, or verify that we've, we're satisfied with the, uh, the, the delineation of the vernal pool because it's on there, but it's a, it's a, just a circle. Right. Yeah, well, that, that was like two or three hundred feet deeper into right. the conservation there, right? That right. was that was nowhere near where we were that day, right? right? Yeah. So what's the issue? With well, the it's not pool? so far away. Uh, other than that, that's what I was saying. I don't know if someone could be out there, you know, and, you, and do anything. But, but the habitat does. It would be a destination trip. I mean, you'd be looking for it if you're out there. It's well, here's the circle. Let me get yeah, that's closer. Yeah, the pool is right. Oh, so they didn't have the circle. They had the they had the offset. Yeah. So it's like this is like what a hundred feet or something like that. And right. But that's what I was saying about you know the the things that were up in the air with the document that you sent to email that it depends upon what fleshes out for this project because if the project is 60% towards Main Street then it's so far away from that that it's not even in play. Well, but we still don't want to improve that on the ANRAD, right? I mean, no, the I ANRAD understand should that. only be right. improving what right. we've... The, so, the, so, so the flood zone, maybe Mike, you being so. an engineer, could explain. I, I think I can explain it pretty well. Mm -hmm. That we generally know with 100 year flood line is, right? It It's not going to go higher by five feet. And it's probably unlikely to go higher by two feet. I mean, as the elevation increases, it just disappears into the ground. So that next contour line would probably be where it's at. And that next contour line is exactly where um, the wetland line is. So, you know, there's the width of judgment right there. It's either exactly correct where it is, or it's gonna move up a little bit, but it's not gonna mess up this project. The riverfront, it, that's not what we're talking about. So we're not talking about that 200 foot riverfront. I right. think that's outside of this entire project. And that's probably why they didn't mention it. But I just had it in there just to be, you know, have a complete package of all that work. Um, and, and you know, I think, I think they can build, build their project off of this line. I mean, 
we, we walked it a couple of times. Also the bordering times. vegetated wetland. Bordering vegetated wetland line. And the, and the other line, the 100-year 100, the 100 flood elevation is probably not going to get defined even during the next phase of this project. It just doesn't seem like it would be an issue. Can I ask a question? If this project gets approved, what they're saying, like three or four houses or whatever it is, so it's, a, it's multiple houses, whether it's two, three, four, whatever, something of that nature. And there was always a contingency, as I recall, when the last high-density housing mm -hmm. wanted to go in there. But if, this pro if, if it got approved, that house on the side of the road, right next to this project, was going to go with it. Yeah, they I would think sell that house based on that. And is there anything to stop something like that from happening once this gets approved? This is really just a line, right? The ANRAD is just approving where the boarding, where the resource areas are. No projects, just just the resource areas. Okay, so that's all we're doing is identifying where they can't build, the places they can't do things. And whatever comes of that, we don't know yet. I think the only question is, in in my mind, is if that vernal pool and the habitat area, as people read through our regulations, if they thought that, you know, this in the back area we needed a little bit more habitat, but there might not be enough room back here for a house. I'm not, not I'm um, not sure. Where would they have gotten this delineation that they put on the plan for the overall pool? I have no idea. Because, you know, according to the Mass GIS viewer, they submitted with the application, the vernal pool is mapped approximately where the 10 is written on the 10 foot vernal pool buffer. The 100 foot. Yeah. It's supposed to be 100, but I mean. Right here? Yeah, that's where it's mapped on Mass GIS. Does the, like center, does the center of the pool kind of thing? Yeah, right. that's what that's what it shows. But I can't see that. I'm sorry. Chuck did go out and try to find try to it. Find the vernal pool? Yeah. You can't miss it. It's huge. You walk uh, yeah. to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the pa the, all the paths. You know, well, we not all the paths, but there's a path that's within 30 feet of it. Yeah. So. But I think I think we might be able to get a more verifiable location if you do a air photo kind of overlay. Have we looked at that even on ours? I haven't looked at it. I don't know if you have, Chuck. But Chuck, you see, you walked yeah. out to it yeah. during one of the site visits, and we seem to have some confidence that it was off property. So, I mean, MassGIS's online data viewer has got well, some inaccuracies exactly. to we, it. We like to say, so, don't you don't rely on that for the wetlands. Well, so, um, Sometimes some, some of those certified vernal pool locations are more an approximation than not. Yeah. But I I would rather keep it off. No. Yeah. Well, well how do they how do they get, how do they get it into our GIS system? Is there a latitude longitude? How do, how do Oh, they grab it right off uh, Mass Mass Heritage. It's brought in. And it depends on how Mass Just Heritage the data, data layer. plots it. So they might right. get so they might get notes, they might get I mean there's different ways they might get a lat long. I think they're aren't they required? I, I, I would to put hope a lat it all comes from a single database. Yeah, we too. Yeah. Just just well to prevent I mean, to, to try to restrict or prevent as many errors as possible for people moving lines and playing with it, I would hope it would be at a, a database where you can you know, be licensed to access the database, but you can't make changes to it. I would hope. I mean, I just... Right, what I'm saying is the inherent data, the data that natural heritage receives Isn't there may an or may not be for, for vernal pools? Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I agree with That's it. That's what I'm but saying. Chuck, isn't there an application for vernal pools? Yes. And how do they ask you to, to identify the location? Yeah. It can be pretty easy, isn't yeah. it? No, well, no. They ask, for, yeah, they ask for GIS be. coordinates. Now, there's a spot That's for that, for, yeah. For state. State or you would think you'd have the right GIS coordinates for the Well, no one's mapped this. This pool is probably from the 80s. 80s, you know? right. 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 Uh, this is the property in question back here, right? Should we do aerial photos? There's, oh. the, there's where it shows that's the vertical That's board. what I was right. saying, yeah. But that, but that you means... You can park anywhere around, Jack, in there. Can we check the aerial photo? But I, I live right here. Mike... We're, we're, I've been out there for years with my kids, but 
that whole area down there, you can't walk through that area. You're up to your knees in mud and water. So back there, I mean, that frontal pole's got to be there because of the Ipswich River, which is a little further behind it. But it gets very wet down there. So it shows like some pines in that area. I mean, this is this is where they had it, right? No. No. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. It was right. This is a red dot. No, no, no. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm talking about yeah, the yeah. one that you saw on the map was right there. Right in the intersection. Okay, go back to the right, 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 right here. I can't see. <laughs> no. well, it'd be great if we had an infrared. Right here. You could see, see it. Right. Right, exactly, yes. Mike. Yeah. Yeah. I can't tell anything. Can you just talk about Maybe we could say in this. Thing. You know, one thing we could uh, say in this ORAD is. Can you get closer and move? Oh, we're going to move. Uh, <laughs> this is mm -hmm. the actual pool. That's yeah. up there, so. Yeah. This is, yeah. So, Chuck, so one. I mean, we could leave it hanging in the ORAD. We've done that before, that this ORAD does not verify. Oh, I think what we've just been doing proves that we should leave it hanging in the yeah. ORAD. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, no one. So that's does, what you have written, not, right? This hasn't. This is not verifying yeah. the verbal. You have that here, here are the, the resource document. areas that we are right. stating as valid, and it's basically going just the forward. flags that we have right. 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 So we're not verifying the right. floodplain. We're not verifying the vernal pool right. boundary right. Um, right. or the setback. For that. I'm all right with that approach. And yeah. they can Chuck has that written in the, the document. Yeah. yeah, I have two extras here. If people want to review and it. Like said, they, I'll take one. They may not have comment because they may have what they need for right. But I'll, but if you need. if you agree and that fine. vernal pool up to that ten. Well, this is, oh, this is what I read earlier. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if it goes yeah, I mean, out. Yeah, we pretty much disagreed with everything. <laughs> Oh, right here. Well, well, it's, it's not unusual. We'll have to remove which is fine. Sandborn right. Lane, it yeah. came up also, so and yeah. the project here. was able to move forward because we didn't check that area for yeah. vernal pools. A little bit. Turns out there weren't any. But. So a little bit. So actually, uh, I mean, it's going to come before us. It's going to be in our jurisdiction, jurisdiction, no matter what. If. Doesn't you couldn't. Who would feel comfortable right now figuring out where that vernal pool is? No. It, and instead of no, waiting would, another two months, I think right. it, it just right. if we add it, we would be waiting. No, I, I think what we've done is fine. I, I mean, I, I think I think the applicant when when I mentioned the flood line, um, Maureen was here and she said, "No, we don't. We want you to close because." They wanted to move on. She had an opportunity to bring back information, and we could verify that line. Okay. It wasn't something that you know we didn't have to close. And she said fine. In terms of what we are not verifying on this ORAD, should we list that on the WPA form as inaccurate? Other resource areas, the boundaries described on the reference plan and the abbreviated. And rad were found to be inaccurate and cannot be confirmed for the following resource areas. And we put the floodplain. I and think we've learned from um, one of our past projects. We don't want to say that it's inaccurate, right? No, um, I think the what what we learned from the past project is this is exactly the place where we say what we definitely point. know and what we yeah. are not. Confirming. Right. We want to, might want to say undetermined, not inaccurate. Yeah. I think we just want to be clear that right. it's not m not necessarily inaccurate, but undetermined. Undetermined. Okay. So it says. So what I went with was they the the resource areas are modified, and we specifically looked at the boarding vegetated wetland, and then I che I checked that off, and I checked off other resource areas. Specifically, and I said C attached, which brings them to oh, my attachment. Oh, red. Yeah, so right. which walks Clearly through it out. why we're not doing that. And I also mentions the vernal pool, and there are more than one out there mm -hmm. that also weren't picked up. But I actually, maybe if I turn on the, uh, um, it's certified and it's uh, something. What are they? Uncertified? <laughs> Other, what's the other? There's two terms for vernal pools. One is that they're certified vernal pool, and the other one is 
I think it's just autumnal. Certified. Oh, okay. I think it's just certified. Yeah, I just Um, yeah. Let's see if we have it on here. Prior, I mean, on the terms. Not sure. Certified vernal pools and potential vernal, vernal pools. pools. Mm. There you go. That's from an aerial photo, but. I only, see no. I only see certified ones out there. Well, so it's I have to assume if they make it a potential vernal pool, it's because they probably aerially photographed it, like in the fall or something, or the late summer. Because if it's a vernal pool, it has to be wet in the spring, right? Yeah. No, so it's just it, not certified by the National Fiscal Heritage, right? All the potential ones are actually filed with national oh no all the potential ones are are the flyover and okay. all the certified ones actually have paperwork but yeah identified. Okay. yeah right. so if you okay. go on to um mass oliver um the GIS, gis website when you go to one of those dots you can actually click on it and get the information of when you know who did it where it is uh whatever description they put on it to get you out to that point so I mean that could that could help the applicant also. I mean, typically, if we click on this one, it doesn't provide. Well, that. it won't do it through here. And we can get info on that one, that location. No, because this is our this is Map Geo. This isn't. Okay. Yeah, well, so when it pulls in the Oliver GIS data, that that same uh, that metadata. Meta, yeah. Thank you. It work it is. That's the data that comes after the data. It's not working. Huh? I, I, I never, mean, maybe, I, I never knew it too. Maybe uh, they're just importing line types and they're not getting the actual. Typically, you know who does this? Kim, and she and just she left. was just left. She just left, and she would know, wouldn't she? She would. She would. But I've never seen those. Uh, so I usually go to Oliver, which is yeah. which is really good. So, um, even Google Maps isn't bad. There's no, oh no, that's there's no yeah. leaves in the trees. When there's okay. leaves in the trees, you can't see a lot of stuff. All right. Are we so we don't, need to, or we don't need to make a vote. We already approved. It's just. Well, you would. You closed it and you and you issued. We can make another vote. And make a motion to approve the. To accept the. Accept the ORAD as written by Chuck. Second. All those in favor. Thank you, Mike. Give you credit for the work. I think I would add that, you know, now that we've closed it, there's a lot of permits on this property. There's at least four, this might be the fourth, but there's three others in our files. They never did top of bank. They never did where the 200 foot riverfront is um, or where that vernal pool is. In the previous ones. In the previous ones. They so were never approved. I saw that. So they're very similar. Help me out to kind of, I was, Wondering, you know, what but to do. How, with how that, long ago were they? When, when was the last? One was 2003. So these I lots have been before. The, this lot has been before the commission before for something like this. Yeah, few times. So I, yeah. there's just not. It wasn't important to know those things for their for their project. No. So if it was that 40B that was that was talked about, our hundred foot habitat or a thousand foot habitat area, whatever it turns into. It, that's nothing. That that's yeah. that's mean annual high water. That's the edge of the vernal pool, according to the state. So you're right back to the the pond. Um, that the, and the, the rivers are too far away, and I'm I wouldn't be concerned about a hundred year flood zone. They're not going to be digging out there, anyways. I mean, they really can't. That's that's. Yeah, that would be tough. It's in back of the well in line. So. Next. Okay, yeah. we had a vote. 
bond vote for? <laughs> I thought about it. What was the vote? Uh, to approve the ORAD for, uh, as written, for uh, 1503 Main Street. Yes. Well, oh, raise your hand. No, we signed it. I don't have a Can part. I count it? I'd have to wait for you to come back. Yeah. Now we're going down, there's not being there. <laughs> what do we have, we have enough? We have enough. We have enough. We don't have to, don't have to, don't have to make it up. Posthumously. All right. All right. So, did I see Kim sneaking a, and maybe you can help us make up the shortfall when we go to four foot wide stuff? Like, is this, this, we don't have it. Oh, I didn't sign it. No. Oh. I didn't have a pen. Remember? Oh, yeah. Is that, did I hear her ask her kind of hint around, seeing if she could get money from us for the? Yes. For that extra I heard foot? that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they would have changed it. It just seems so odd. Yeah. It just, it was, to because the other stuff looks so good, and their old, old stuff doesn't, doesn't, I mean, it look, might look okay, but it doesn't look as good as the four foot wide turkey and wood stuff. Especially if you have bikes right all over it, you want to encourage it. So. And next uh, item is certificate of compliance for uh, 270-0685 off Beaver Road, map near 46 lot near. That's the old. That, that's okay. the old agenda. Um, that's not. That's we, been withdrawn. Oh, if really? you're talking about two Beaver Road, the uh, yeah. Tennessee pipe now has been withdrawn. They're going to go back at it in the spring. Did you guys? We uh, took a look at it. Did you? <laughs> did you s <laughs> stay still? It's <laughs> They still don't want to, even though you looked at it. Um, did you see anything that I need to mention to them to uh, straighten out between now and the spring? Or is there any problems out there? We didn't see any erosion. There was a lot of water. It was, you know, the day after the deluge. Um, There's a lot of water going over the structure. Um, what we saw, the, it looks like they I identified the edge of the bank on that structure with yellow. But the water was over that that yellow area and on the side closest to to Pearl Street, Lucy Lucy Street. Um, it seems like one of those. There were three um, chicklets, you know, <laughs> rows of chicklets. <laughs> it's the best it, big chicklets. Um, that was raised, right? Or is that on the Pearl Street, the Beaver Road Street side, that yes. was that was lowered. On the other side, it was raised. It was a little bit raised, so it was, it was kind of yeah. a, a little weird. But um, it seemed it, it looked good. Pearl Street. Uh, yeah, it's it's off Pearl, Lucy, off Pearl Street, oh, Lucy, Lucy Drive. Lucy Drive. That off go down. Pearl. Yeah, then down down to Beaver. Right. right. I said Pearl Street. No, I just thought it was. It's just on that way. side. Yeah, on that side. About. Yeah. So, any significant erosion? Or? No, we didn't see any scouring, no. No. erosion, and no significant water going over. Just looked good. I thought. We'll give them three months to see if we get some erosion. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, no. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we made a discovery that the plans weren't stamped, and she did send me a a stamped copy of the plans. <laughs> From uh, you know the applicant to, um, to something Mar, whatever Del Mar or something like that. It's superimposed. It's like copy and paste, but it's like that big. The guy's <laughs> stamp. I'm like, oh man. So <laughs> pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> also <laughs> illegal, but that's Mar. for him, so that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's a way to lose your license. So yeah, so <laughs> that's for him. I think we're going to have to insist on getting something wet stamped for uh, the certificate of compliance. So. That's, that was my only, I put it in the file. Okay, what about the minor project permit to Maple Street, Hannon? Uh, to Maple Street was an example I was using. If you want to roll that into um, the minor project permit discussion, it should be fine. So I sent out, um, sent out the minor project permit checklist and what we've approved in the past when we modified our regulations for us so years ago. Um, I wanted to change it and in a nutshell what I wanted to do <coughs> is to allow administrative approvals for things that were actually being administratively approved. The way the minor project permit uh, is written, it, it says that I have to bring every project to the commission, which 
in the past uh, from a commission member, I was asked not to do that anymore. I was just taking up time and they're only minor project permits. So I hadn't been doing it probably for three years. So I made some changes. I have them in red uh, on the second page. And I added, second and third page, and I added the minor project permit checklist which is something we're supposed to be adding to every time we notice that you know this becomes um, kind of policy of the commission to allow these things and why are we requiring a uh, request for determination of applicability and the one example that I, I would give you is a lot of the fences that go up aren't beyond the 50 foot line like it asks in this minor project permit. That's, that's a line of demarcation here. Anything over the 50 foot line is allowed um, under a minor project permit. But when you get closer, it's, it's not allowed. It has to turn into a, a, a more uh, you know, tedious task to get approved. When you say it's not allowed, it, it's not, it's it doesn't qualify for a minor it project. Qualify for and they have to submit an RDA. That's right. And the expense goes up. But even without looking at the expense, we typically always allow fencing, as long as it's on lawn, um, or as long as it's not in the wetland. And But the way this is written, I need to ask for a uh, request for determination of applicability each time. So I, I asked that that was added. Um, I think what I did is it, it is on there, but but I asked that it would be allowed right up to the wetland edge, um, you know, as, as requested by the applicant. So in a situation where there's lawn up to, the, up to the edge of the wetland, and we had a couple of those come in, in the past we've said yes, and I would just continue that practice. We, we've said yes under a minor project. We've said yes under an, our, a determination of applicability. It's site walk. Okay, yeah. So, it, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I got confused here. You're not proposing to change. I'm proposing to allow an administrative approval up to the wetland boundary of installing a fence without going back to the commission and asking you if I me or the applicant going back to the commission to say, well, was this approval, will you back up this approval? Is that but then it wouldn't be an RDA any longer. No, it's not going to be an RDA. I'm trying to say yeah. we're making it a minor project permit and we're allowing it up to the edge of the wetland boundary. Is that in this redlined version? Yeah. Can you point that out to me? Oh. Is it B? Oh. Um. Yeah, it's B on the second, on the fourth page. It says, uh, it, it just mentions that fences is, are part of this, but we're taking, but we're allowing these things as, a, as an administrative approval. So it's, it's in there, but what's been taken out is the 50 foot area and the ability to, you know, the need to take it to the commission. I guess the way I read it right now is that it currently shouldn't be coming to us. Yeah. Well, it, even if it was up to the... It is coming to you. Every fence closer is coming. Closer it is coming to us, yeah. but the way we currently have it written, it meets the... Without red line, 
it would have met the project permit. No, it has to be 50 feet away. But where's it sitting? Uh, yeah, what was no, that, what's on the no, that's tree. Second page. So we're getting pruning of trees and shrubs more than 50 feet away. Yeah. But B, insulation of fencing and freestanding walls provided they will not. That Constitute has, a barrier. That has no measurement associated with it. All right, so in that case, that would be what's eliminated there is the approval by the commission after the fact. So I guess I get the approval on that through the old minor project permit, but still have to bring it to the commission for them to, uh, you know, verify that the approval was correct. For applicants, what's the, I think it's an easy and makes sense from an administrative point of view, but for the applicants, what's the difference? It's a price difference? Mm -hmm. Right. The RDA what's is a bigger permit fee. Price and what's, time and... What's the difference in... For what? what? What project are we talking about? Any project? Any project. A project with a fence that goes up right to the edge of the wetland. Time. Money. When we say money, dress. What's the difference between the the it's minor $100 project? Difference. Hundred dollar difference. I kind of. Oh. I was it just a procedural thing? Because if I read, this was the old one. This first page, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The okay. red line is the new one. No, the. The, I think this is a clean version, right? Yeah, I have a clean version. A clean version, the old one. Where's the old? The old one is the red line. The red yeah. line, yeah. Mm. And then there's just the checklist that we yeah, have. This is on our website. On the checklist, right? Check yeah. What are non-permanent wildlife lines? Hunting blind. I, hunting. Yeah. Hunting stand. Yeah. Okay. So you go duck hunting. You put something up so you can hide. Okay. Shoot the little duck. Poor little duck. Or deer. And so what? So what I'm also reading in this is um, the installation of wells. Um, just about anywhere on the property. Yep. Including geothermal. Yep. Which have a heat displacement feature. Which reduce carbon emissions, though. Yeah. So it's good. It's a closed system. It's good. So yeah, well I was going to say it's a closed system. Well is so basically it's a closed system, but it's a heat transfer. Right, but system. why would it affect the wetlands? I think that's where you're driving. Uh, change of ground. Geothermal temperature. well is not going to come from the upper water. Why it's going to be right. bedrock. Isn't it right. way down low? Well? Three, eight hundred feet. The, the, sta sta the, the standard depth is. Deep. So standard the well's on there because right. it's a... Um, 600 feet. Yeah. It's a vertical disturbance that's temporary. And in my experience, um, with the ability to uh, ask for erosion control and matting if I need it. I mean, this is, you know, again, this is running. This isn't, you know, this, this is, there's a lot of lawn in Reading. So, and there's a lot of times that this can, people can drive out on the lawn and it's not going to cause a disturbance. Um, and then there's just a slurry pit. And that would, that's, again, that's erosion. And sometimes you're so far away, you don't need to, um, you don't need to uh, put up erosion control because the slurry is not going to go anywhere near the wetland. So that, I added that because, again, if you, I'm, I'm comfortable with allowing well. So uh, let me ask you, disturbance. when it comes to the minor permits, um, what's the right minor projects? Um, what's the recourse if things go south? I mean, we could still issue an enforcement order if they're not doing something within the buffer zone that so, we don't like. So I mean, you know what I mean? I'm thinking RDA doesn't have as much enforcement teeth as an NOI. And now we're... And RDA has no, enforcement has no enforcement teeth. teeth. 
But uh, yeah, so I'm just wondering, like, so what's our check? Typically, on this? what this commission says, if something goes wrong, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna put it in the order of conditions. What we'll do is we'll use our, you know, uh, if if they, you know, if they build in the wetland, we can do an enforcement order. So. Yep. But these minor project permits are in our view permit system. Everyone that everyone that uh, submits an application and the application exists now to do this um, goes into the view permit system, and then they're sent a permit that tells them exactly what to do. Put in erosion control. The erosion control would be identified on a plan. It asks them to provide a plan of what they're going to do, so we can hold them to that. Okay. You know, the plan can be a sketch, though, with a minor project permit. So, you're going to hold them to the plan. You're going to put in erosion control, and then there's going to be a site visit at the end, when you know, to, to verify. Um, so, in in the last couple of months, sorry, no problem. In the last couple of months, like. How many permits that you've seen could qualify for this, but were dealt with as an RDA? Like, give me a ballpark in the last. Or a great months. lead. We've got an annual report coming up. How many did we do this year? About no, how many I this mean, year? I don't want to. I just I mean, want to get a sense. Uh, an like, idea. At, like how many a month? How many? I think I think throughout the year there would be less average. than ten. Okay. Yeah. I, because I mean, every fence that came in. Yes. So. But if it's a fence that's part of a larger expansion project, that's a different situation. Yeah, yeah of course it would oh, be. Well, yeah. yeah, that would be a notice, notice of intent. intent. Yeah. Um, on the installation of the fencing or freestanding stone walls, <coughs> is it my interpretation that they could have that in the wetland as well? Nothing can go in the wetland. It has to be in the buffer zone. So this is only allowing work in the buffer zone. On existing lawn? No. Can, so a forested area that's not, that's not wet, they could put a fence out there if they wanted to. So like through the 25 okay. foot? Yeah. So. yeah. so it's within that, it's a, it, it, you find that in G, the minor projects, like it, it specifically says in the buff zone. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I, you know, if, if the buffer zone if the buffer zone, uh, the 25 foot zone is well vegetated and they want to put a fence right on the wetland line for the purpose of letting their dog, you know, destroy or just have at it in the whole buffer zone, then, then we're not being protective of that buffer zone. Right. This, this, isn't, this isn't a, um, a way to do something that you normally couldn't. This is just easing the regular, re easing the process. So the administrative approval is going to be, you, you know, you can't put this in the wetland, you have a lot of lawn, it doesn't make any sense. You know, uh, that's my opinion. If you want to go to the commission, that's in there to get their opinion, then right. luck, you're, you're um, you know, you can file an, a notice of intent or an RDA. Um, but any of those examples that you're worried about, I would think that I would catch them, you know, as, as okay. much as you, uh, and you know, because I, I think I'm, I'm hearing from some people that I'm, I'm kind of. I just go by the book because I can't make up, you know, I can't go off that. But you guys can. You can make up your mind because you're the commission, and and you know, it's you can apply the standards how you see it. But I have to follow the rules. That's that's how I see the, my job. Yeah. But so okay. in that example, I guess. Would that fence be considered a minor project? Yes. No fence would be considered. Uh, every fence would be considered a minor project. If it's Where's only it a fence, if it's only a fence project, fence they, they with, wouldn't with be allowed to put a fence in the Opening for, for that wouldn't that wildlife, wouldn't happen. Wildlife passage. Yeah. So is that the one you were talking about when she said, "Can we go in a wetland or a stone wall in a wetland?" Yeah. No, no, not. I, I guess, I guess, I'm what I'm seeing is if it's not. Well, if it's a grass, n not grass all the way to the edge. If the if it's vegetated, so I'm, I'm trying to think of what we did on Haverhill Street. Good example for um, Mr. Gomez. Yes, 
and he had it running along the side of the lawn and then through the trees which were pine trees so there was pine needles on the ground there was no wetland over there you could have gone way back you know, you could right. that that's a forested area where I would say, Yeah, that, that would be okay. If right, you but to on go the downhill there. side it was really it was pretty much up right up to the wetland and that was his lawn as well. Right. So he right. couldn't cut through the yeah. wetland and right. we we didn't allow that. And I'm gonna follow right. the same practices. So um, but he did go up to gotcha. the edge of the lawn running down the length of the yard. Okay. So if if you Want this is a, it sounds like this is not a no. I haven't. I guess we haven't heard from everybody. I can get this in a more readable form and send it back to the commission again at the, in the next packet. Okay. And if you guys could think of like what you asked me, how many projects in the last year seem to be not wasting our time? But I mean, if we see another fence, it doesn't it, to me it doesn't make any sense. We're always saying yes to fences. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't need to see another copy. Um, and sorry, I just have. One. Uh, yeah, I would agree. I mean, I don't necessarily see another copy. I don't see that much issue. The the one other I want to see in here: short-term scientific or educational activities. I put um, that in for you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> would this mean like the the Eagle Scout projects don't come? Before Who was I talking to? Um, no, that does not mean no. the Eagle Scout projects don't come to us. The reason why the Eagle Scout project come to us is because they are supposed to get experience dealing with boards so they can never not come between us. That, I always feel that that's step number one. Now let's get them something to say that works. Well, that's what I was going to say. You know, I think that's an important part of the process. So that's typically what I think of when I when I see this. This so. is this is more. And I was talking to Anika earlier today about this. This is the uh, Belmont and Ivy uh, redundant water main where they went out there at the beginning. I don't know if you're on the commission, and they had to do some borings, and it mm. it seemed. And I, even the even the engineer department said, "You guys allow it in your regulations, and you'll find that in our we allow that as uh, borings, exploratory yeah, borings, borings. exploratory borings. Well, that's right. part of the. But we made the them things. come to the commission, and I don't know if they filed a minor project firm or whatever. But they, but now, I mean, really. It says it in the Wetlands Protection Act that we should allow it. It's a, I mean, it's a mild, it, it's it, mild. I think the commission yeah. feels more comfortable than the original commission yeah. about things like that. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's. It's allowed. That's it's just mitigating the damage that the vehicles do in the process. That's just the, the yeah. And I, and that's I, just the bigger issue. All right. That's I didn't understand what that that short-term okay, scientific or educational activities meant. Then I didn't realize that's what you were. So, Chuck, in the, the first thing in the, under the conditions, the limited resource area must be clearly evident to the conservation administrator. Is that something, if you have any question, you just say, this is going to go before the commission for an yeah. NRAD and then go from yeah. there? You know, obviously, if it's existing lawn, but if you have someone that has existing lawn and then wants to put a chain link fence that's maybe 15 feet inside the lawn and then you, there's no uh, wetland delineate, delineation, it's... How do you determine at that point? Well, I, th I uh, so I feel very confident in my skills of delineating well. Okay, okay so I, I I could do that, but most lawns and most projects that we deal with here, if it's not a forested area, it's going to be obvious. Right. I mean. And what I've done with the commission before is I've realized that when we go out and we're a commission and this commission doesn't look in the lawn to see if the wetland or the lawn extended into the wetland. It's basically calling the edge of the lawn the edge of the wetland. And they're not really trying to police that area that was somehow converted. Right. And I would apply the same principles because I think, you know, if I wanted to take someone's lawn away, um, that would be different than something I've ever done. And secondly, I think that that wouldn't qualify under this permit. I'm not going to go out in there and put my stamp on it. You guys are going to be making that decision to take someone's lawn away. So, so this is again, this is this is, and, and most lawns that go up to the wetland. I mean, there's there's definitely a lot of encroachment. But that fence, if they wanted it, would go right at the edge of the lawn. Okay. One of the, the examples that I was wanted to use was Lawrence Road. Remember that was uh, delineated by the engineer on the project. And when we went out, there was some, some indi indi indicative vegetation that was there that was... Do you have an address? 
I mean, what's in the street number? I think it's this one here, isn't it? This this one here, seven yards. Yeah, isn't that the one way go, go off of uh, Franklin Street? No, that was that Pearl. That was next year. I mean, the last one that was in here was the Pearl Street. You know, where this is the one I'm, the one I'm thinking of is uh, when you go uh, up Main Street, take a left on uh, Forest Street, okay. and take a left and the first left. You know how that goes around Tennyson. Oh, Tennyson. Oh, okay, yeah. Right. Is that Tennyson? And the project, he was doing a porch on the front, and it wouldn't actually have been uh, a, a, a permit if a wetland scientist had done that project right. because he was so conservative. But can you remember that they had a, kind of a flat backyard, yeah. and then it, it kind of went down at an angle, and the, we changed the wetland line there that had been delineated. So, you know, that was kind of one of the things that popped into my head when you have something like that. If you had someone that wanted to, to, because they had dogs, if you want to have someone that wanted to put a fence to maybe fence in an area to put their dogs in that was in their backyard, how do you? My my answer to that is you're, you're not, I mean, this is, this is a, this is, for items that are on the minor project right. checklist. Okay. I mean, this is not going to be an addition. No, no, I'm so talking about a fence. Yeah. Well, we had, we had a place that I mean, fence really, on if, that I, if I floor. was two feet beyond where the supposed, you know, some scientist goes out there and he finds out, hey, look, the wetland's two feet above where you put the fence, is that right. really going to be a big deal? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's two okay. feet. I mean, they usually they say the width of professional judgment is like five feet. Okay. So we can get five people together and find a different five different lines. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I mean, they're just it's supposed to be for projects that. I mean, a post and rail fence right. on the wrong side of the line. I mean, there's so much opening; it's not right. going to disturb anything. Right. Yeah. I mean, I I would I would uh, uh, opt for using your best judgment on these things here. And the the only other thing that we've done in the past is I wanted you to think about moving the pool line from 50 feet to a little bit closer because we've actually done that. So this is an above ground pool right now. It's a notice of intent, a notice of intent for an above ground pool that's closer to, to a wetland when we have so many spots in our uh, Reading where that's still lawn all the way up to the wetland. So we have a structure thing at 35 feet and you guys should think about moving that line from 50 feet for an above ground pool to 35 feet as a minor project permit. If and I don't consider, even though it's semi-permanent, a pool really isn't permanent. It's not like you're digging a foundation, but above ground, yeah. No, it's it, it, it just sits on top of the the ground. They put a little same. You know, and, the, and the yards are fairly small here. You know, some a lot of them are. And I know there's been two or three people over the years that couldn't put a pool in because they didn't want to go through the hassle of doing an, uh, a notice of intent. And they couldn't qualify for the 50 feet away on their uh, on their projects. So it's something to think about. I'm not pushing that, but I, but this is kind of like a whole revamp of this minor project permit. And again, whatever you guys think should be on there. Um, Can we discuss that and approve that tonight? No, I, I you know I think we've taken it pretty far. Okay. Let me uh, get all these thoughts together. Even though I was not asked to do another draft, I'm going to, and I'll put it in the uh, put it in the packet. Okay. Yeah. Chuck, teeny teeny typo. Minor projects include letter F conversion of impervious surfaces, vegetated areas and buffer zones provided instead of provides. I did. Yeah. Letter F on the first page? Second page. Second page. Uh, section three. Okay, got it. All right, I think it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody going to the uh, conference, MACC? I'd be happy to go. And I'll make it this year. Do it this year. Okay, I guess Aniki will be. The sole representative. That's it. I never know if I'm going. If I'm going to be available on a Saturday. So you know you have to buy buy your registration and then we pay you back. Submit. Okay. Yeah. All right. But well, it includes an Uber. Bob, you're not going. 
Dave, you have that one? No, no, we haven't done that in the past. That's what MACC wants you to do now. Okay, I feel yeah. like you all have always done that for me when I've gone. No, uh, yeah, it was their, their policy. They don't want to be chasing money. They figured we can. No, we're going to put have a tough time getting paid by the towns, huh? I think so. I think that's always been a complaint because there's a lot of staff time involved in that, and they're like, it's not going to do it. Yeah. Um, also, I think we talked about this. Chuck added another old new business. Um, I think in the past that the town has asked um, for some funds out of our revolving our, um, our wetlands account. revolving funds, but it's the state account. Yep. So and so they're. Uh, I mean, it's been up to about. What's the highest they've asked? It's a lot. I can. I, I know it's been four thousand before. Yeah. Maybe it's been six. I'm not yeah. sure. They're asking for two thousand, and that's this to offset your. Um, I don't know. It's just. A, it's just an offset, and it's going to go into the it's general going to go fund. Into the general fund. I don't know. It's not allocated or earmarked for anything. Generally, they do earmark it, though, right? I'm not sure. I'm not. I, I don't know what they're doing anymore. Uh, not not anymore. But that's really not my. I mean, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not the finance guy, and I don't know where it's going and how the numbers. Why is it two thousand one year and four thousand? I know that sometimes it's it's less because they say you know we, we used to have like eight grand and then it was drained right down to fifteen hundred, and when you add. Everybody going to the you know fall conference or the spring conference, that's nine hundred dollars. So now we have another six. We have another six hundred dollars to I don't know buy a fence or do you know because we spend our money on plants or whatnot when people ask for this you know another one foot of a boardwalk or something like that. So it was drained down a lot, and I think that in the last few years they've given us an opportunity to bring it back up again. Did we ever? Did we ever learn any more about the uh, tree fund and the amount that's going into that? We, well, I know exactly how much how much we we gave them like five thousand dollars. We gave them, but but there was a discussion of they're getting money. They're getting money from the town as well, like an additional five thousand, or it's covering the. I, well, when when I discussed this with Bob uh, Keating and said we wanted to set this up. He said that, you know, we didn't know what numbers we would be looking at. And he says right now he gets 5,000 from the town. Not sure if that's still the case. We actually um, don't have a tree warden that I, I don't believe we have a tree warden at this point unless he just got here or she just got here. Um, and I, I thought we would be giving them a 500 bucks or, you know, something like that. But. But we but we generated in less than its first year five thousand dollars for this tree fund, and um, it, uh, so who's the guy? It's uh, Mike Hannaford. I talked to Mike Hannaford, who was the acting tree warden for a while, um, and he said the money's needed, and he's been using it around town, and he did some stuff up at Matera Cabin with that money, so. I don't know if I, you know, maybe 5,000 is okay, maybe 3,000 is okay. And we did discuss maybe doing something like having other options for that policy, but we never got into it. Yeah. I, I guess my only thought is when they, when they ask for part of that funding, I, I, typically what I would expect is they, when, when they're asking for the money, they're going around to everybody, right? They're, what do you mean by that? Uh, when they're asking for 2000 you know, every, I, I guess. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, so. So if he's getting generally 5000 and now we've just added another 5500 onto it, they're. Well, he's getting 5000 So it's, it's, think of it this way. It's not, it's not for salary. Yep. That's taken care of. Think of it like it's office supplies. So they're, they're, you know, there's not a pencil, enough pencils and paper to go around. So now we've just given them more money for pencils and papers, although there's trees this time, all right? Yep. So my pencils and papers are being paid by the Public Services Division, and I don't even have to worry about that. Yep. So the only thing I need to do with this money is to give it out to uh, Boy and Girl Scouts, 
for the trail committee. Okay. When a crest comes in, it's not earmarked for anything else, and it would accumulate to you know absurd numbers. Okay. If you know, if people didn't ask for it. Yeah. So in a way, one of the things we do with our money is to give it to people to have them plant native vegetation. This is what's happening with this tree fund. Mm -hmm. um, and when we set this up, we didn't want the uh, burden of, you know, watching it. So we really just hijacked <laughs> their fund. We said, here's an option that, that works for us. Um, and someone else has to take care of the numbers. Yeah, okay. No, I'm fine with that. Okay. So the building department, there's they don't they don't have the same thing that we have. Yeah. So okay. there's not even a choice for them. That's that's right. So the right. health department may be the same. I don't know how every department works, but I but I do know how conservation works. So the way conservation works is we have local bylaw fees. Mm -hmm which go right into the general fund in this town. Sometimes that doesn't happen, but they, in this town, they do. Um, and then we have our Wetlands Protection Act fees, which by the Wetlands Protection regulations are up to us, this commission, what to do with. We're in charge of it. And that's why they have to ask, and that's why we have to approve it. So they can't touch that other side but again, you know, thinking about what everyone else is doing and the times we're in right now, you know, it yeah. doesn't make any sense to have a ten thousand dollar balance just to balance. Yeah. And and I can tell you, in another commission, um, I'm on in, in Arlington, uh, we we keep a higher balance because we are constantly buying little strips of land to add on to what we already have. So we actually put $10,000 in with the CPA committee so they can, you know, we bought Elizabeth Island. So we had, we gave them a lot of, like $15,000 because we wanted to be part of that. And so did the Audubon and so did, this, um, I, I think the um, Open Land the Open Land Trust. So they came together. But we, we don't have that here. Yes. Not, not that request hasn't come up. Okay. So do we need to vote on this? Oh, yeah. Okay. I vote to approve $2,000 offset. $2,000 offset from the state revolving state fund. Revolving fund. Okay. State revolving fund. Sure. Okay. Second. All those in favor. Okay. Does that leave enough in the account for us to go on the Reading Conservation tra Training Junket down at Foxwoods? <laughs> I know, that'd be great. <laughs> you know, sometimes when I'm really crazy, I think, hey, look, it's time for a new pair of hip wagers. <laughs> that that yeah. could be paid for. But, uh, because you don't, you don't I actually, have some, but they're, they leak. You don't actually you have, have uh, one, you don't, don't have those here? No, I have a pair, but the they, they leak. So and if they're all being, you can't take them back. The extension? Yeah. That's right. No, they weren't, but I, I had them like, God, I've had them. There's an like extension of a spider of a and the new one. Um, they, they, they didn't, um, they, no, we're not doing that, right, the, uh, Lawrence Road? No, we have to extend that. I, I've misplaced, oh, here it is. I just want to make sure. No, it's we, for, for another, right. I've got that, we missed that. That's good. Yeah, we want to, uh, extend the order of conditions for 70 Lawrence Road. For two years. For Michael Broussard. Um, he is um, getting underway on his project. It was a three-year permit in the first place. And um, he thinks he can be done maybe another year, but he requested two more years just to make sure. So it's just a simple extension. All the hard work and the heavy lifting is done because we already gave him an order of conditions for this project, which included a pool um, and the addition. Has he started it? So I, I might even have a copy of it. He's, the addition's in the ground, and Anika was there tonight. Did you, yeah, you want to take over? Yeah, um, it's, it's in the back corner of his house. There's another portion of his house that's prop that's closer to the wetlands than the addition he's working on. So um, here is this. I didn't see an issue. Does that work for everyone, or I gotta flip it? Okay, so. So here's the addition right here. Yep. And it's. I mean, this doesn't matter. It was it was part of the order of conditions, but it's almost outside the hundred foot buffer zone. 
Yeah, but it includes the pool. It includes any of the work in front of it. Um, and I didn't he, see the pool. He took it down maybe for the winter. Uh, is it a? What does that say right there? Um, why above I ground. The yeah, I don't know. Would you take one down? I didn't. Yeah, you wouldn't I didn't take see. an above ground pool down. Is it just not done? Do you think he? Do you think it's? It's I the second thing. He, he might be doing it second. Maybe it's the addition first. That's then, probably what's happening because he's got a staging area. Yeah. Um, between the pool and the addition. So, um, yeah, so I stopped by. There's no roof on that portion of his house. It's an extension of his kitchen. And, um, and you know, that, that sort of L that's already built, existing, that's closer to the wetlands than this addition. And so it just seemed Seem pretty okay. simple. It's flat back there. Was there a reason why it's taken so long? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say the reason why it's taking so long is he's just just like everybody else, you know. He's busy. He can't work on his own house. He's got to earn some money working for somebody else. This is his own house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I move we approve the extension. That's okay. okay. All those in favor. So who got the uh, second? Doesn't matter. Very good. We heard the, the second, same. second hand day. Have everyone got shoes yeah, but the cobbler son? Yeah, I was going to use that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's true. Yeah. Alright, so the signature yeah. page is the first page. There. And what about the northeast corner of Cedar Swamp? Hey, no, that was taken off the agenda. <laughs> I made sure. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. <laughs> That's okay. true. No, she sent me an email. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, get that off there. <laughs> I was surprised. Um, just saved myself. <laughs> yeah. did this. We're waiting for the uh, Becky wisely chose to okay. avoid me during this more sick moments in the past three weeks. All right, so um, now we're down, I, as I see it, we're the one item left. It's the minutes and two items, right? No, annual report. So I think it's worth telling us about this because we'll just forget about it. I'll, so I'll speak for I, myself at least. So when I sent that out to you, um, you know, when I sent that out to you, I thought we were going to do a typical annual report and it was going to be chocked full of projects and what we've done and, and you know, things that, that are going on. But, but we were, the request came in that we would write two paragraphs, which I can handle. So it's oh, okay. no longer needed. Okay. Well, two and I couldn't do it in two paragraphs. I have a page. Let's say two paragraphs. Do you, do you have something in there on the tree policy? Or? Doesn't it doesn't need to get in there? You know what? The tree policy is in there, and I was going to put the minor project permit thing in there. You know, stealing a page from Becky who signed the project, <laughs> signed the approval before we approved it. But um, <laughs> save that for next year. But I was going to say, yeah, I said save it for next year. But the tree policy is in there, okay? And um, so it's but it's really just tells you. Who we are, what we did, what we do, what we administrate. Administrate um, an example. I used um, I, I used Arcadia again because of the because of the conservation area, and that's been approved. That that project will move oh, forward. Good. Um, and then it, then the last steps were 
uh, you know, thank you to all the volunteers, and then it was just who's on the commission. So that's that's what I did. Short and sweet. That sounds well, good. Two paragraphs. So. Okay. Yeah. So you don't need our input on that. You know, yeah. it, Which is I, fine. Think, I think with all that stuff is usually what I do, and then I would ask, you know, for some... To do like a project. Yeah, something. find a project you guys like and add it, and that just wasn't needed. I mean, if there's one project you feel strongly about, I'll put it in, but it has to get back to me tomorrow, and we're already over two paragraphs. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> and, I, and I think it was try to keep it to two paragraphs. It wasn't... Hey, hey, it should be two paragraphs, so I don't want to make anything. it seem like that. And right away, maybe the grant of land on Franklin Street. Excuse me, the project for uh, 4850 Franklin Street across the street from the, from the cemetery? Mm -hmm. Have we heard? No. Um, it, is it is too it, early to say? No, well, no, it's not too early to say. We have that is part of it, and they have to do, they have to do the CR on it, and that's going to be something that happens. But the way I see that unfolding is when they come in for those orders of conditions for the two that are in the buffer zone. That's when it will be so something be that we would you know okay. say yeah. we won't we won't finish this project job until we have. Or yeah, we'll that put in that, those orders to have the documentation before the certificate of compliance. Got it. So they did come in for two permits, two, two of the foundations, and I signed off on them. That the foundations will be outside the 100 foot, but if they were going to do landscaping and that, it wouldn't be, but it said foundation only, and foundation only usually turns into just the building also. Okay. So that's that update. The minutes for approval, January 10th? January 10th. No comments. Mm -hmm. I read them. They're fine with me. Someday I'm going to get a comment from you. <laughs> I put out the agenda. I had five people email me <laughs> with one typo. <Yep. laughs> I believe we approve the minutes for January 10th. Second. All those in favor? I'm abstaining because I wasn't here. Okay. I mentioned uh, I should probably abstain because I was 107 there. Main Street. Sure, if you could. Sure. Um, Who is the second? Dave. Dave. Dave, you. I just should just go to you all the time. <laughs> well, just because you weren't here doesn't mean you can't approve the minutes, can you? I guess. Well, yeah, because I have no clue what happened, and I didn't. Well, I guess that's true. Well, it's an administrative so open. Yeah. 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 Is it actually isn't how it works? I went by the other day. There was there wasn't a wasn't a parking space to be had in the parking lot. Yeah. It's Sign it's off full. as in, it's good. You know, administratively. I typically don't like to know. Well, and you could also say that you got a hold of the tape and you watched it. Yeah, okay. but I didn't. <laughs> so, you guys can live and die in those minutes. So, so we only force them to do that when there's four people here and one guy saying, I wasn't here for the minutes. Yeah. And then we say, come on. I, so I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it if I didn't, if you needed me. <laughs> Okay, so, so I just want to give you guys an update. Uh, so release of mineral oil dielectric fluid at 107 Main Street. Um, I spoke to the LSP for that project. Um, he said that um, he closed that project down, uh, looked into the catch basin, pumped it out, pressure washed it, um, checked the connections, looked at other down gradient um, catch basins and pipes and didn't find any evidence of dielectric fluid, so close the site out. Um, I'll review the, the close out. Um, so just so happens that same storm, which was in late October of last year, um, so RMLD experienced seven down pole transformers during that storm. So um, these things were dropping all over the place that day. Um, one was on South Street um, that he told me about. He jumped the gun and said, oh, by the way, there was one at 164 South Street that also went down during that storm. And that's all sad. And I'm just thinking. And, and I said, well, I haven't seen these reports. And he said, well, I sent them to the town manager. So I was like, oh, OK. You know, we don't always get. Um, 
the notice, but I'm going to... And you know what? Not only do you not usually get them, but that last one that we got for 107 was dated in September or something like that? Yeah, the date on the letter is se December, but the release happened in October. Yeah. yeah. You know, and here, and I got it in January. So did he... Did so, they, who were you talking to that... I was talking it? to Mr. Jamalo, the LST yeah, of so record. How come he... Did you request... So I, I had requested that, I, you know... I said, well, can can I get a copy? He said, well, give me your email. I'll, you know, I'll email it over to you. And I said, listen, if, is it on DEP's website? Because I don't want to bog down my inbox. You know, and he said, yeah, it's already posted to DEP's website. It's, it's there. And he said, if you have any trouble, you have any questions, he gave me his cell phone number, his email address. Um, so I remember speaking to him before. Yeah, Dr Kamala's name is familiar. Um, maybe it was that other pole mounted transformer. Yeah, the one that we went out and checked, but we not the one off Summer Street. I'm just, um, um, I'm going to do my own technical review follow up on well, that. I think we should be and getting the reports more timely. I don't, I'm not sure why. We're I think not a discussion on. has to be had with Bob Lillisher. I don't know. I mean, his office gets those. It seems like we take it one step further up the ladder and go right to Jamello and say, you know, CC us. It's if it's if it's an activity if it's that occurred, because he's doing everything for RMLD, for RMLD. They, they they like that guy. I'll send him. It's, if I'll an send activity him. occurred if, in, within our jurisdiction, he, sh he should be sending it to the Reading Conservation Commission. If that's well, a sense of the commission, I'll send him and tell him yeah, 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 he's yeah. got to send it to us. But but it should be coming directly to us. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll send an email to that effect and, tell, and CC you on that so yeah. that it goes to you, not just tell to Tell him we'll make him file if he doesn't comply yeah. for every single poll that comes down. So the new, um, the new material, so this was the dialectic fluid. <coughs> right. It wasn't <coughs> the stuff with the PCBs in it. Right, the PCB containing um, dialectic fluid as, as outlawed. But there's still a few poles or transformers that have that in it. Or is that not correct? Because they were worried about that when the when I, that pole I fell down. I don't know the, their requirement yeah, to register. That? I don't know. Off of Van Norton. Does anybody I, else know I about thought, that? Wasn't it I something that, that they, they have the new Parson material, Lane? but is that it? they could have held PCBs the, in the past? Is yeah. that what it was? Like a grandfathered was, transformer, they weren't required to replace it. I don't, I don't yeah. know. That's a question. I don't know who I would ask the Department of Energy. It's one of those guys that you had talked to previously <laughs> about yeah, my that. My cousin is a uh, he's a first class lineman for He, he had Mass said Electric. something. I remember something you had said that some of those Lion things may have had the PCBs <laughs> in the past, but they have the new material in yes, them, right. which would have residual, could have residual. Uh, no, they actually can't use the, they can't reuse the cans that had PCB in them before. Those have to be, um, those have to be crushed and, and then recycled. So any of the, the newer, um, any of the newer transformers um, have to contain the, the newer mineral oil uh, dielectric fluid. And if they take down, let's say if they're putting up a higher transmission line, if they take down a transformer that has PCB oil in it, they can't reuse that someplace else. That then has to be recycled. So. And, and they all have a date Not code on it, and all of them that were manufactured yeah. uh, after a certain date have the new oil in them. PCB free? PCB free. So. But doesn't mean it's clean, though. But so did they <laughs> test the dielectric fluid that was actually in the. Well, so, so whatever was released, they pumped it out. And so I asked him, how much did you pump out? You know, to see really how much, what volume they recaptured from what a 30 gallon tank. And he, and he said, oh, I don't remember. So he said, and then we pressure washed it, the, the catch basin. And, that, you know, and I'm not sure if that's. That big vessel that you see up in the, up in the pole is not hollow. That's got a, a transformer inside of it. Right. So right. it's. Uh, right. 30 not, gallons would be yeah, max. No, it'd be. I mean, it would be. It would what, be considerably half? less. It would be considerably less than that. Do you uh, have an, an idea? No, I could find out though. I could I'm give curious. you. I could find out exactly what the, you know, the KV rate of the transformer and how much oil they carry. I would only guess that there's probably 
less than 20% or 15% of a right. void in there. Yeah. And so it's chock full of copper windings. Copper windings. Yeah, it's, it's literally it's a transformer. Yeah. Oil's just to keep it cool and prevent moisture from causing a, right. a short. Right, cool. right. Well, not so much cool, but no moisture. Yeah. So, any other it. Um, comments? Any other business? Hearing, hearing none, do I hear motion to adjourn? What? I was just going to ask the Nika one question. On uh, the minutes on 107 South Street, did I get that term right? Uh, you were going to check and see if there was a sign of a documented release to the wetland? Is yep. that what that was? Right. Yeah. According to him, no. Okay. Then they say that they had seven transformers that went down. Just because they went down, that doesn't necessarily mean that they burst. You can have a transformer. He implied that, he implied that yeah. you know, seven, seven of them needed to be addressed that day. So it was an implied, but no, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the details well, are for the if other. They came down as rupture because they right. fall over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's hope not. But, but you still need to attend them, right? <laughs> when they get down. Transformer off my car. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Second. All those in favor? Meeting mm. adjourned.